those who lead us astray. The consequences of your actions here are irreversible. What is happening? Slayers of the world, we are back. It is Thursday. Is it Thursday, Hugo? Is it Thursday right now? Is that what's going on? Is It, it is, is Thursday. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here. We're going to play some Super Gore Nest. Ooh. It should be awesome. How am I doing? Am I centered? I don't have my second monitor set up this time, so I have to use your guidance, Josh. How are we doing? You're looking great, man. Looking nice. fit, looking ready, looking like you're ready to take on Super Gore Nest. It's... I was just looking, it has so many secrets and stuff. And I was, we were trying to talk about it before chat. I don't know if we're going to do every secret. We know it's the best way to upgrade the Slayer the fastest because you get those little bonuses yes. at the very end. But we're going to do our best. But if you're just joining us for the first time, first of all, welcome. Hello. How are you? Konnichiwa and all of the other language. The deal is this. Sitting directly to the, oh, damn it. I did it the wrong way. Sitting directly to the screen left of me is none other than Hugo Martin, who is game director on Doom Eternal at id Software. And he is going to be playing through all of the game. One week at a time, we are on chapter five, as you just said now, Super Gornest. Hugo, how you feeling? What you thinking? What's good? I'm doing good. Uh, you know, this is uh, certainly one of our, our favorite levels. Uh, really, this, this center part of the game, I think, is where the game really takes off. I've acquired the uh, Ballista. So that's kind of like when you have all the tools now to, to really, truly wreck shop. And, and the game is going to meet you there at your skill level for sure. Uh, those of you who've played this game know that that's, uh, Super Gorgeous is where the difficulty definitely takes a step up. Uh, and, and it starts to demand that the players start to combine and utilize all the tools that the game has has uh, given them uh, throughout the experience. You know, a, a good action game, uh, a game of our kind, or whether it's a, a really anything, any kind of good uh, action game that you like, it, it, it's kind of like in the first couple hours or hour, you're, you're learning individual uh, skills, like, you know, what, what each button press does kind of like learning um, a series of actions that you could do throughout the game. And then uh, in the second half, you're really asked to start to combine those things uh, with total freedom to be able to overcome the challenges that the game is throwing at you. And that's very much doom. At this point, you know, uh, I, I say to people all the time, like each each move is a note. And at the very end of the game, uh, you know, and, and the controller or the mouse and keyboard is an instrument. And at the end, you'll be playing that thing like Eddie Van Halen uh, when it comes <laughs> comes to doom eternal so uh that's really kind of the fun of doom eternal is like you you really start to be able to do things you didn't think you could do before i think it, it teaches you uh how to how to play it and and how to master it and through that mastery is where really satisfaction comes i think the highs of doom eternal uh are, are very are very satisfying uh for sure so every week just to let you guys know we we are always uh, watching the streams and and staying on the social, uh, you know, the forums and stuff, and we see all you new black belts out there who've mastered the Doom Eternal experience, just putting on a show, putting on a clinic. I'm friends with a lot of the moderators, as is Josh, and they're always bragging on you guys, telling me about how we've got a whole new crop of beasts out there dominating uh, the experience. And then, honestly, taking some of those skills and bringing it over to battle mode, because that's where the true test is for, for the elite slayers, for sure. 
But uh, if you're going to stick to campaign, absolutely. I've seen some incredible nightmare runs, ultra nightmare. Your guys' mastery over the over the experience is uh, really something something to behold. Not to overstate it, it's unbelievable. It really is. Uh, what everybody's doing. It's it's, crazy. it's like so, watching that action movie. It's like. Who do you like? Do you like Stallone? Do you like, you know, John Claude Van Damme? Do you like Schwarzenegger? Of course, because we all yes. like Schwarzenegger because he's the best. Fight me. <laughs> and you get to see all these guys. We have all these guys in the Doom community. And again, if you're brand new to the community, two discords you definitely need to join. Number one, the official Doom Discord, discord.gg slash Doom. That is all things Doom, all iterations from the classic to eternal, all of it under the sun, that's where you go. And if you are just getting into battle mode, or if maybe you're deep into battle mode and for some reason you didn't know, there are always amazing coaches, great moderators on both servers, but if you're going for battle mode, Spicy Demons, that's discord.gg slash Spicy Demons, you can find the top tier competition at all times. They are always there and ready, and they are juicers. I'm not even gonna yes. get into what juicers are, <laughs> As you know, Hugo, but I mean, I feel like it all comes back to this action movie analogy, right? Like there are juicers on the server at all times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, it's awesome. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. And, uh, and and they, along with the other Reddit, uh, the official Reddit forum, absolutely, are, are uh, of Doom. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. Doom Eternal is, is a big part of our process, uh, for sure. So we thank you again all for your support. So a little background on this level. Yeah. Uh, it is it is probably it was in development the longest uh, so basically during the course of development uh, this along with uh, Mars core and uh, our complex uh, you usually begin uh, video game development with a vertical slice so that is like you know you have your green light where you you, you bring your idea to your publisher uh, you know you're collaborating with the publisher and marketing the whole time but like you know you, you bring your idea to the publisher uh, and you present them with a, a green light presentation and the goal is to walk out of there with a thumbs up absolutely you know and and um and from there you you begin development proving out you know some of your theories and what you hope would work and and the first true test uh, a milestone uh with your publisher is going to be the the uh, the vertical slice and and uh you, you're going to want to start to vertical slice is just a sliver of the experience and you want to make sure that it's that that you could feel the fun that that the, the promise is there that you get a little taste a little glimpse into what the full game will be and super gore nest was that uh, level for us and then after that there's a, a lot of publishers do it differently you know in the industry uh it's pretty common to have like that expands to like a vertical chunk or a larger piece of the game and uh you know during development with doom uh, we really just wanted, Marty and I had kind of a, a thing with each other. We would say that we wanted to get straight A's. We wanted to get an A on every milestone so that every step along the way, the game was always fun. It was always satisfying. And we, we didn't want to have that uncomfortable feeling, which happens so often to anybody, all teams, you know, where, where the fun's not quite there yet. You think mm. it's going to snap into place. Where you have uh, to, good, like, explain instead of, like, like no actually explaining. let them doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, when it comes to commercial art, uh, the consumer is never wrong. You know, uh, every, everybody knows I love to talk about the theory of game design and experience engagement. Uh, my favorite part and why I like the community so much is that when it comes to commercial art as, as opposed to fine art, and I originally went to school for fine art, so I was inundated with all of that stuff. The, the, uh, Back when you were uh, just the, making art for you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, it all comes down to people picking up. Uh, the game and playing it and it's either good or it's either fun or it's not that's it I, I can't stand behind you and and explain to you why something is really good you just have to feel it you know and and uh so you you have all your theories and and why you think this is fun and the fun zone and blah 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 but uh then people you got to step away people play it and then you get feedback you know and in the case of doom eternal throughout we had really really good milestones which is a sign that the project is going well uh big credit to the team and everyone involved for for making that possible. I'm always every week going to just give massive love to the amazing developers that did software. Um, so yeah, we 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 had this. We had Mars Core. We had several maps uh, in development as part of that initial uh, experience that we had been working on. So as a result, we certainly had a lot of opportunity to to iterate on this map as well as many others. Uh, the story was coming into place. This was actually a map to where we found our style you know like i think with the with the complexity of the levels and everything that was going on uh the visual style of the game proved that uh the more gamey that it got the better it felt we had an issue very early on with target acquisition 
um, if you play a game like Cyberpunk or, or really any game, you know, that, that isn't quite as fast. Uh, you don't mind if there's a shadowy figure in the background. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a guy over there. Sure, I'll just ADS, you know, hopefully right. he's there. You know, in Doom, when I couldn't see the imps in the corners or I couldn't see the carcasses and where they were, is really, really frustrating. So what we've actually done uh, is we've, we've uh, increased the fill light on the game so that way everything is kind of visible uh, when, it, when it comes to the characters. And the individual characters actually have uh, lights on them uh, you know, uh, Tony, our art director, could go into a little bit more detail, but we have character lights to be able to pull them out of the environment. The more that we we uh, worked on this game, and honestly, what I believe it's it's closer to the original Doom, uh, even in, in some ways in 2016 was, is that 20, uh, Doom, the 1993 Doom was very similar. You know, mm. like, it didn't matter how... Uh, Doom 64 did a lot with lighting to obscure yeah. a lot of the enemy types, but, like, the original Doom, you could have 50 dudes on screen, but you could see them all. You know, right. granted, they didn't have sophisticated lighting and all that stuff. Sure. But it actually really helped with target acquisition when shit got really thick in the original Doom 1 and 2. And we wanted to kind of, I mean, it, it again, it, it, it proved to be, we didn't just do it just for nostalgia's sake. I mean, it, it was a strategic decision to aid uh, with target acquisition uh, it, through, throughout the experience. Gameplay at id always comes first. You know, uh, fun is always first for us. You know, we, we'll never sacrifice... It doesn't matter if it looks beautiful and muty and, and atmospheric with smoke everywhere if uh, you're getting killed by a carcass and you can't see him. Yeah, because it feels uh, bad, right? That's it feels the bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, big credit to Lear DeRossi, and, and uh, he's uh, our lead environment artist, and the incredible uh, art team that we have. Philip, all those guys, Timmy. I mean, I could just go on and on. Felix, I just got, I'm going to start naming them all. And we have a Let's massive do it. Art team. Let's so, do uh, it. But, uh, <laughs> Get him out yeah. here. Bring them all out. <laughs> You know, uh, really, it, it, the idea is beginning concept. Uh, you have to have a really good idea, and and, uh, and visually, they just did tremendous work. While uh, Jason O'Connell uh, was the level designer on this, he worked on the level and the experience. You know, uh, it, it it all came together. We used it as an opportunity to kind of get a glimpse into what Doom Eternal could become, and and uh, the art guys just killed it. I mean, it was the first time that we had ever actually gone to Earth. We really felt that the fans wanted to go to Earth. Because it's a little bit of that Doom 2, you know, yeah. Doom 2, kind of like the Earth Doom. So, like, we thought we would do the same. And it's like that sliver and, uh, of, like, whatever you want to call it, like, relatability, right? It's kind of like the first Matrix versus the second and the third. It's like, we can say a lot of things about the plot and the story, which we will not get into, I swear to God, because we could. Because we could. You know we could. You were here last week for Star Wars. But there was, like, <laughs> there's that relatability with the Matrix of, like, it starts out and Keanu is in the world that you think you live in. And, like, there's something that, even yeah. though this is a fantasy, this is a game, there's nothing... There's no realisticness that is crossing over those universes. <laughs> Still, there's something about like even just those nods because we're talking about the artists. Like my God, like the amount of fun that those dudes must have had, dudes and ladies must have had on all of like the fake stores. That is one of my favorite things in video games. Is like yeah. looking at the fake ads, the fake stores, all the nods, all the tongue in cheek. Like that is gold. Yep. You know what I mean? Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah, and and uh, you know, uh, absolutely. And and uh, yeah, they went to town on that stuff. If you look in. There's there's inside jokes everywhere. I'm a pizza <laughs> box. I have my own pizza place. You do. And, and, How about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. And and they kind of poke fun at, at everybody in the <laughs> studio. Uh, I think that's a, just a part of it. I mean, at the end of Quake Two, there's the the pictures of the developers. You know, like right. like it is always not taking itself seriously. You know, so I think uh, th that the, the spirit of that is alive and well. Yeah. You know, in the new it. And, and a big shout out. Uh, one guy that I haven't really had an opportunity to talk about too mm. much is Jerry Gehan. Who is our mission design director? So he he kind of oversees the creation of all the levels, and all the, man. the content, the, the the missions that go into the levels, yeah. narrative you know components. I mean it's a it's a really important job. And if you think the game is fun and the levels are fun, well you know big big credit to all the guys and especially Jerry. He's doing a really great job. Yeah. Um, he's the guy I in the, the chair for sure. Why yeah. The second Matrix is not as good. We're gonna we're gonna spend two seconds on that. <laughs> Uh, I, I knew you weren't like going to let that go. I'm glad you came back to it. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? What I don't like about the, the second Matrix, uh -huh. and this is something that relates to Doom, mm. is uh, he in the beginning, there was always a hope and fear of whether or not he would overcome the challenges. You know, there's this buildup of like, can he beat an agent? Oh my yeah. God, no one has ever faced one. Like, totally. can he, can't he? And there's this general 
for those of you who are aspiring writers and content creators, you know, I'm not a writer. I do write the story for Doom, but like I wouldn't really consider myself like a professional catch writer. Catch yourself on the back. It's pretty professional. <laughs> Go ahead. But, but uh, well, it's, it's not the focus. Our, sure. our, story, our story serves the game. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I like making games. Not, yeah. not, I'm not in this to like, you know, be some... Um, right. Like if you would switch to, to scene 74 on page 32, it, yeah, yeah, that's, you would read the no, following no, prayers. Yeah, it's different. all about making the game. We, yeah, we yeah. don't want to make a movie. We want to make a video game. Yeah. And and um, but a simple rule is you just want hope and fear. If 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 I have hope for the best for a character and fear the worst, that means I'm going to be engaged while I'm watching it. It's a general principle that slasher films in the '80s uh, relied on. Like if I see Jamie Lee Curtis inside the house and I know that Michael Myers is walking out, or I I know that he went into the closet, I can see through his eyes, I know he's in there. She walks in, she doesn't know he's there, but I know, dramatic irony when the audience knows something that the characters don't. But I hope, uh, uh, hope and fear, it's very intense at that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, I I hope she'll make it out, I fear that she won't. That that little loop is what slasher films do. And I just feel like that was gone after Matrix 1, because he became God. So that first fight in, in Matrix 2, the whole time you're like, well yeah, we've established this, he's God. So right. like every fight after this is just kind of filler because I know he can't lose. Because Plus, he's like, not. don't you don't you agree that like okay, in the first one where you have this, you have reality that everyone can relate to, right? You have the the hope and fear. You don't know what he's capable of. It's his origin story. It's his discovery. Can, can, can he beat them? Can, you know, when when he stops to face uh, Agent Smith at the end in the subway. Yeah. The hope and fear is incredible. You're yeah. like, oh my god, can he do it? This I could don't be know, it. Like, right. This could be it. Yeah. When he turns to face anybody in the rest of the Matrix, is you're like, how long is this going to take <laughs> for him to beat the shit out of them? I know. Sorry. I, I, no, no, no. It's true. And the other thing that I always think is too is like, when you have the idea that there is another future parallel world, and like that MacGuffin is still in the box, it's still like the briefcase hasn't been opened, and you're just like, this is going to hit the fan when we get to the other world. This is going to be crazy. And then it turns yeah. out they're just like in burlap sacks doing like. Raves? Yeah. You're just like, right. really? Can we go back? Can we go to the world that I know? Because like, the world I know yeah. might be tighter than this. This might be kind of, eh, you know what I mean? I, I actually thought that they, they, uh, the, the whole ending, when in terms, <laughs> in terms of hope and fear of Matrix yeah. One. I mean, you're, yeah. the, 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 when they went to go get Morpheus, everything. I mean, mm-hmm. the whole time you're like, oh my god, I don't think he could do this, but he does. It's amazing. Yeah. I feel like they really. I wasn't a huge fan of how that felt in Matrix Two. I feel like Matrix Three. I'm a huge fan of Matrix. Yeah. Uh, they got it back because, like, when they the, the invasion of Zion, I think is just like overwhelmingly ridiculously awesome. Yeah, that's right. And those, those mech sequences, like, I'm definitely worried about all of those guys in particular. That general it was freaking awesome. Yeah, it was so it was so good. So, if you're just uh, joining us now, welcome to the Matrix podcast, where we review <laughs> every film in the Matrix series one by one, talk about the pluses and minuses. No, this is the Doom Eternal stream. This is Hugo Martin, game director from id software and we are going to be playing through super gorgeous and it's not a short level and it is one of the best and so we are going to get into it we're switching over now here we are okay we're yeah. back on the the fortress of doom i think in the save file you already got the ballista right you don't have to get it again i can't remember is that i right? think i have to get Maybe it left? again okay okay because the save file yeah yeah because we didn't actually leave the doom fortress last time so okay talk us through this idea so in doom 2016 the the gauss exists and it's basically anything in front of it gibbs it dies it 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 blows up in a million pieces and that was kind of like it's kind of a later game 2016 doom 2016 thing it's not like something part of like the regular meta of like weapon switching so like talk to us now about this is chapter five so we're a little less than halfway through the game potentially when we finish this level but going into this level in the in the fortress of doom here we get the ballista and the ballista becomes kind of a staple of the arsenal from this point forward, right? Like, what was that decision about about giving that much power this early? And like, did you have to like balance around it? Like, what was that? What were those conversations like in the office? You know, it's it's just a back and forth. The ballista was always, uh, especially a gun like that, it was certainly had its its periods in development where it was way too hard. You know, uh, one of our our big uh, critiques of uh, 2016 is uh, we thought that the, the Gauss rifle in 2016 represented that rotation of guns that, like, you know, you could kind of lean on a little bit. So we, we decided that the, the Ballista... Which one did we pick last time? All right, I already did that. We're fully upgraded there. You already got Heavy your... Heavy Demon Save Parlant Demons drop armor at a faster rate. As long as you're at max, as long as you're at max. I think I'll do... 
I think I'll do this one. Yeah, I agree. Go in the napalm. Skadoosh. Yes. Get um, that flame belch. Just given all the armor all the time. Make that's everybody right. fire longer. And then I think I can get another one. Yes. Yes. Are you out of them? Oh, damn. You got three left. Okay. I got Rolling. three. Rolling right now. So, um... We figured that, uh, you know, every, uh, we, we really wanted to work hard to make every aspect of Doom Eternal play off itself. Like, you know, uh, so each gun exists and is balanced in relation to the to the, to the the other guns, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so if you have the rocket launcher, uh, by the way, a quick story about this. Well, if yeah, you yeah. have the rocket launcher and it's a <laughs> slow moving, powerful projectile yeah. that where we landed kind of classic Doom, for, not not for the sake of nostalgia it's good design you know like high yeah. risk high reward weapon it could kill me but it could also wreck demons uh we then we tuned enemy types for that to kind of be really effective against so a slow moving rocket against the arachnatron who hops around a lot or certain enemy types is going to be uh, allow the faster moving enemies to get away from it more easily uh, or dodge it or juke it uh, and in some cases they actually do are intentionally programmed to be able to do that but mm -hmm. um then it, it should frustrate the, it, the player should feel like the rocket launcher is amazing, but then God damn it, you know, like, a, yes, we have lock on to kind of counter that, but like overall you're sort of like, damn, I wish I had something that was as powerful, but a little bit more immediate. And so then we, that's where the gauss comes in. So, uh, and we actually have tuned things. So like in, in some cases, I, I believe under the hood, like the, the, the gauss does, uh, the rocket does a little bit uh, more damage against certain enemy types, but uh, the, the, the ballista, gauss, yeah. I'm sorry, the ballista is yeah. the, is the, the gun that you want to use against quick moving enemies you know, that are harder to hit, uh, for sure. Cause it's that um, point and, and click I, and that satisfying, like really high damage and yeah. really decent fire rate, especially if you're doing the meta, which is starting to figure out that quick switching is optimal. And now that you have the super shotgun, which has the meat hook attached to it, the possibilities of adding traversal of adding super high DPS between the two of them, the damage per second is like getting really juicy all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, fans, as much as we were, we would like to make this thing the god killer, we just didn't want the game to become unbalanced. You know, I, I, I've i heard people say, like, I love the... I, I think the Unmaker actually is a little bit of the unsung hero of the game because I think if you do get used to using it, mm -hmm. uh, it, it certainly has its place. But For sure. We could have we could have easily made this thing broke a shit when it yeah. comes to balance. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I personally, like... I, while I love that in games, it's just personal opinion where mm -hmm. like the game makes me work really hard for something um, there it is. you know that'll There's add to my power. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, designed by Brian Flynn, uh, a concept artist that, that worked uh, at ID, a really super talented guy and a cool guy, and, and uh, modeled by Timothy Yerman. Damn, and, uh, pulling out all the stuff. It's got names on the Rolodex, rolling through Hugo's listen, memory banks. I like this. These, these, these are my bros. Um, and my buddies did amazing the work. um yeah. yeah the the um so a quick note on those sentinel crystals and uh mm -hmm. how you have to pick the two in order to unlock the one so yeah. uh in 2016 like people ask me all the time like oh well the ideas for doom eternal did you look at this game did you look at that game hey it's hard do you like from software games it's like right ultimately the best thing that you could do and this this podcast is as much about you know tips for young aspiring designers as it is anything 100%. And, and fans of the game but like uh just let your game tell you what it wants that's the that's the best thing you could do like you know play your game know your game and and it'll tell you what's what's feeling good and, and what's not and on and and then certainly if you're fortunate enough to be allowed to make a sequel well man you're in a massive uh, you're in a great position because you could look at all of the things that worked in your game maybe things you feel like could have been could have been better uh, one of the things about uh, 2016 was that if you played it a lot you noticed that there was people would fall into optimal paths they mm -hmm. would basically just like fill columns of stuff that they liked which is great but uh, with with this setup because if you invest in two things, you unlock the uh, special ability. Right. It kind of encourages you to, to mix it up, you know, to not just go health, health, health. You know, you have to make, you know, uh, some choices there. And ultimately, we felt, you know, we don't we don't want to move you around and uh, just for the sake of doing it. We, we thought that that would make it, again, my favorite word, engaging. We wanted to make upgrading your character feel engaging. Are you engaged? Um, Did you like it? Well, I liked it because I feel like engagement just simply means I'm thinking. So yeah. I feel like, you know, I, I had to make some choices there. 
and uh, and I liked it. And yeah. Then, whereas uh, before you just get an upgrade and you have it, and it's just like they just kind of spill out one after the other, and you get more powerful without really having a lot yeah. of agency in like how that happens and how like you can look at how you're playing and go, you know what I really could use is armor, but if I fully upgrade this instead of just going armor, 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 then my flame yes. belch is better, period. So maybe I should do yep. that. That's cool. Like it that. also it also encourages people to like dabble. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like kind of reminds them that, that there are how many of us I mean in, in an RPG, I think it's the strength of an RPG that sure. you could do multiple playthroughs and start to invest in different skill trees, you know, like a, a different build. Uh, so to speak so but in an action game it's just different i mean yeah. we're not it, it's not set up in that way for like multiple playthroughs we want you to play through the game for different reasons not to experiment with different builds but like and that is a part of it i think that the like any game i was having a conversation with derek heidi uh in marketing and um who you Shout know and it's kind derek. of like you know that you may notice a slight change in the environment <laughs> Don't worry, it's part of the ha -ha. <laughs> The the location is nearby. This is the site where the invasion began. The oldest and most corrupted location on the planet. The Ark fought hard, but they were eventually driven out by the demons. So um Yeah, so it, it just gets you to uh experiment. We we definitely feel like multiple playthroughs obviously feel satisfying as you experiment and learn new mods. Uh, learn more about the combat system, but the depth of our game really comes in in the in the skill that you acquire in the uh, you know with the combat, uh, uh, not necessarily like RPG type systems. Although we have some certainly some progression uh, uh, for sure. So uh, oh, look at this our team Ryan Ryan uh, oh, yeah, Ryan Wacken, you know, killing it. Before you punch that wall, too late. All right. Oh, Just some okay. housekeeping real quick. Uh, we are playing through this right now on PC. Hugo is on a vanilla Xbox controller. I'm only calling it vanilla because as you controller players know, there are all kinds of amazing modded versions you can use, even ones with pads like in the new Xbox uh, Series X right now. But what we are using right now is we are on Hurt Me Plenty is the skill level. This is again chapter five of the main campaign of Doom Eternal, not the DLC. This is Super Gore Nest. We're playing on PC, hurt me plenty, and Hugo uses an inverted controller, which is very yeah. rare. That guy is an actual pilot right now. He is playing with pilot well, and, controls. And, and normally I have paddles. I, I like using like uh, custom controllers that have paddles so I could, for those of you who want like an extra edge, I know a lot of us have mouse and keyboard envy sometimes, and I do play with a mouse and keyboard, but I feel more comfortable uh, playing with the with the controller on this, but but yeah. um, you know you could certainly uh, do a lot of really cool stuff uh, by just adding paddle attachments depending on what platform you are, or you could buy the awesome Elite controller. Holy cow! I'm told I you know sell it, I, sell I'm not, it. I'm not I'm not getting paid to sell Too it. Too late. I've You're selling it now. The Elite. I really I like it. the Elite. You know, heads up, Phil. I'm doing my job. <laughs> but the uh, <laughs> but, I was like, uh, and also visit the gear store for your cacodemon. Sorry, we're, uh, we're we're done. We're done. No, go ahead. What were you saying? That's right. Hey, you know what? Just so you know that I'm not selling stuff. I just got this. I just got this for my. Oh kid wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna go full two shot for a second so we can see this bigger. I am Damn. so stoked. Yeah, look at that. And it Holy came hell. with. Now, now the 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 environments are totally painted. And what? I'm sorry, I have to paint them. But I was yeah, say, it comes like, with all the. <laughs> I'm so stoked for for me and me and my son are going to play this, Hell and yeah. uh, we're we're going to be doing that pretty soon. I got nice. this sitting over here. I've never, I've always t shout out to the big fans out there who who play Warhammer. I've always wanted to play Warhammer, and never really had the chance. Work, school, you know, my kids were really Life. young, but now my yeah. kid, my son is, uh, he's ten. My daughter's eight, and uh, they're getting old enough that we can get into some of the cool hobbies. It's and time so to I went get in to, there. Oh, yeah. I went to Games Workshop, and I was like, all right, let's get started. Hell so yeah. me and the kids are stoked. Dude, that's awesome. That's a and perfect also, we're, you know, home activity. We're, we're, not right getting, we're not getting kickbacks for Elite Controllers. We're not getting kickbacks <laughs> from, from Warhammer. Uh, <laughs> I was going we to say. We're, we're, here to, we're here to nerd out. We're not exactly. getting kickbacks for criticizing the Matrix. <laughs> me and Josh are just shooting the shit, a couple of nerds. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. Warner Brothers, uh, we won't apologize because we love you and we're excited for uh, uh, Matrix 4. And by the way, here's the plug. It's coming to HBO Max as soon as it's out. So there we go. We did all the diligence. Everybody got their props, okay? That's right. The thing that's weird, 
like it's odd to to say so it's not coming out in theaters it's just gonna no be... it's it's both it's both so like i guess just like what they did with wonder woman uh 84 is it's a simultaneous release because a lot of theaters aren't open because of covid because of restrictions because of lockdown they're putting it at the same time both in the theaters and the places you know around the the world that can support actually having people in theaters and they're doing it so people can actually see it at the same time they're releasing it a couple of these movies, like a lot of Warner Brothers movies, uh, on HBO Max. So HBO Max just became a pretty good deal. It also has all the Miyazaki films for all you anime nerds, all of the uh, Adventure Time, uh, a new series, and all of the existing uh, nine seasons or ten seasons or whatever it is for all of you. I'm going to call it American anime nerds. How about that? Everybody gets included, okay? You like things moving that are uh, drawn by human beings? There's a lot of them on HBO Max. Go check it out. I want it to be... <laughs> a 2d animator really i was yes a young man and then i actually uh did some animation mm -hmm. and realized and i did like a gazillion drawings for this scene and the scene ended up being like 2.5 seconds <laughs> and i was like holy shit this is way too hard <laughs> oh it is it is selfless right like the amount yeah. of work that goes into like yes. and yeah you, you know you we all know that computers can there's a specific style of animation that's become more popular, mainly because of production, that like computers can do some of the in-between animations, but that's why when you see those, you know, older Miyazaki films, when you, you know, you see even like uh, older fighting games, right? Like, you know, a lot of the Neo Geo stuff, like, uh, like Mark of the Wolf, all that stuff, a lot of the King of Fighters, like that hand-drawn animation, whether it's pixel-based, whether it's actually on pen and paper, Nothing beats it, but my God, that process is mind-numbing. It's insane. The amount of frames you need it to put is. in something to make it look smooth. Yeah, the patience that those people have. I take my hat off. I never understand how they can do it. It's crazy. So that's when Absolutely. you said, you know what? Maybe a 2D animator is not my lane because... No, huge, huge fan, though. I mean, there, oh, yeah. uh, there's, a, there's a ton of Disney uh, in, in Doom Eternal. Uh, I like that. Sure. Go I mean, on, it, go on. It, what does that mean? Well, there's just the personality of the characters, and uh, you know, I, I'm a, I'm just a big fan of that stuff. So, uh, like I said, we said in the beginning to all the young creators out there, you know, like the best thing you could do is just dive headfirst into your hobbies because uh, they, they are very much, uh, that'll be the things that influence the work you make. 100%. And um, yeah, I just have uh, mad respect. Big time. For uh, especially, you know, I'm at this point an old dude, so like the. Oh hush! The the golden age of the uh, of Disney in in uh, the nineties with uh, you know Aladdin, Lion King, Beauty and the Beast. I mean, those Little Mermaid, were amazing. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah they were um, killing it. But now they so, own Star Wars, so you know what? Right. That's why we get a million Star Warses. And you know what? People can be salty, but honestly, it's one of those things that you reach a certain age where you're like, look, it's like I remember when the first time I heard that they were going to make Cowboy Bebop as a live action and first it was going to be Keanu Reeves and then that fell through and now it's going to be uh, John Cho and they're doing it on Netflix and even though I could I could be that guy we could all be that guy right that goes I can't believe you're taking this amazing IP <laughs> and you're ruining it by making it live action here's the thing guys you don't have to like it you don't have to love it but seeing uh, Netflix or whoever else spend millions of dollars trying to make this thing come to life even if it doesn't work out in the best way possible I'm already entertained they're spending money for yeah. your entertainment who cares you know what I mean you already have the source material if it's already perfect then you know give it a shot Total. you know so, uh, so that that uh, what I just did there is what I did at the E3 uh, QuakeCon <laughs> demo I remember I like I dodged him in the QuakeCon demo and yeah. the demos are really funny uh, we could go into that a little bit I'd love to peel demos? back the curtain yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, like peel, peel back the curtain for you guys to mm -hmm. uh, to see what goes into making some of this stuff. Like, you know, we we end up uh, playing it, you know, uh, not live, but I mean, the, the recordings are, are live. If you yeah. look at uh, that was one thing that I noticed about id when I first came there that I think is so cool is that they really don't like they, they, they you know, they, they want everything to be as authentic as possible because mm -hmm. their community going all the way back to the beginning of Doom. I mean, that's what they, they really expect. Yeah. Uh, Arbalist, I could use that. I could use that. I already have Precision Bolt. I'm not really a micro missiles guy. I used Neither to be. You I did. Think In we'll, 2016, you were obsessed. You loved I, those I things. used. They were really good. Uh, yeah. You know what? Microwave Beam is pretty funny, but we could use. I thought like you already it, did. You know, Arbalist? Okay. Ooh, I like. Why it. not? I like it. I like it. Um, that is like one of my favorite early pain elemental encounter like 
counters yeah. is like so putting that arbalist thing, on them. Yeah, so so we uh one thing I just want to mention, like mm -hmm. what I'm doing here is uh just target snapping. So I guess you know I could so if you put your reticle, we're actually gonna update the base game to include this. Now for those of you who've played FPS for a while, you know the target snapping is where basically if my reticle is near quick scoping, if my reticle is near the target when I go to when I go to snap into my scope, mm -hmm. it will kind of like help me snap it uh, to the target. So you could use it to look really cool and take out weak points, and uh, that's what you know. That's what uh, people do when they're you know they're doing their combos. Uh, right now I don't have the upgrade, and that is slow as shit. I really got to. You got to get that. them upgrades. How many points do you have? Weapon yeah. points? Are they all spent? Because we were saving it for something. Was it fully upgrading the meat hook? I can't remember what it was. Okay, yeah, that. Oh, that your needs quick to switch. Happen. Oh yeah. For yes. some reason, I thought we did that last time. But okay, good. Hot swapper. This is so, crucial. Also, I, it is really crucial. It's big time. Uh, the the um. Then do I need to upgrade how fast this thing shoots? While you look I at that, I, I will remind everybody that everybody on YouTube, everybody on Twitch. First of all, we see you and we love you. Thank you for being here. Second of all, we see all your yeah. questions and they are being pulled and they are being queued. Um, couple of shout outs here. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. First of all, I hear that King of King of the Hill is the Texas anime. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question. We were talking we were talking about the Unmaker. This is a question from Doomslayer88. The question was: what's the difference between the Unmaker in Doom Eternal and the Unmaker in Doom 64 story-wise? What you got? Uh, one, I couldn't tell you what the, the story is of the Unmaker in Doom 64. From what I understand, it looks hellish to me. And I'm a big fan of Doom 64, but yeah. I, I'm never going to lie to you guys. I don't know what the lore is behind it. It looks hellish to me. Yeah. Uh, but the So we took that, and because the, the Makers, you know, there's the, 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 the race of the Makers and now the, the Doom Fiction, that we thought it would be a perfect mix to make it a Maker weapon, because it is the Unmaker. So it is, it is made, you know, by the, by the Makers, if you read the lore. You know uh, that stuff is in there, um, and and just to wrap wrap up that thought, we really did want to make sure that that gun was powerful, but didn't upset the balance. Uh, for those of you who wanted to be more powerful, send your 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 criticism my way. Uh, <laughs> ultimately, I I don't like when a game. I, I I find that like when an action game holds me and holds my attention and makes me work mm -hmm. to to unlock a special ability, you know that that shining gleaming armor in the case or that thing that you know that you want to get, yeah. And and I'm so engaged, you know, going through the process of trying to earn this stuff. And in yeah. an action game, not not, right. it depends on the game, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when I get it and it just trivializes every encounter, it just makes it a delete button, yeah. It it is so satisfying. Like don't get me wrong, there is a period of ecstasy. Once I unlock it and get to use it, but what I find is it, it's basically I start heading towards the exit. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I'm just because you know you, you can only delete things in a game for for so long. You yeah. know, like where all I have to do is walk up to something and hit a button. Yeah. So I really didn't I didn't want it to become that. That's fair. Uh, but it but it's hard. I mean, don't get me wrong, because I'm like maybe we should make it stronger. But, <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> no, it's good. Here's a question for you. This is my my personal question. This is uh this is coming straight out of my my nerd logic mind. Okay. If the makers uh, of, of the race, the race of makers who, who live in a, a sort of heaven, if they themselves made the weapon, was it them that made the weapon and named the weapon the Unmaker? Because that seems like if we made, as humans, a, 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 a nuke or something and called it the Unhuman, like, what's the deal behind that? Like, is it like a, it fell into the wrong hands thing? Is that like a we call it the Unmaker uh, due to the fact that it unmakes <laughs> everything it touches? Or like... What's the deal so, with the name being Unmaker? Other so than the I'm reference to 64. Again, we're, we're always going to keep it real in here. Yeah. I only responded to the fact <laughs> that it's called the Unmaker and we had a race of demons called Makers. And totally I just fair. thought, just just ran that in there. Yeah, and I no, said, it's perfect. The Unmaker. As far as the <laughs> fact that it actually, yes, it does everything you just said. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we didn't really think it through enough. That's fair. That's fair. But, I love it. I but, love it. Uh, it's good. But it's the you same. can probably, you know what, guys, like, uh, you know, uh, derm, doom, uh, doom. Let's start calling it derm. Dermler, just... I love it. Let's go. <laughs> Dermler, hit me with it. What do you got? <laughs> it's, it's just fun to dive into and make, and you know, just just nerd out about it. By the way, like as as a, I've always been a massive 40k uh, fan, mm -hmm. like, and uh, never had really time to dive into the hobby until uh, now. But, until, yes, exactly. Awesome. But but. Um, but I've I've always uh, 
just loved the fiction. And, uh, you know, that's that's the, that's the fun part of of Doom. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think going back to the amount of personality in the characters and then certainly the lore is part of that. So, like, I think I, I love to hear the fiction that people make up about the game and theorize about it. And we've got lots more of that coming uh, in, in DLC, uh, in DLC 2. Uh, for sure like we, we're not done yet guys uh, there's there's plenty more to add to the story some twists some turns uh, I think you should uh, you guys will will like it a lot okay buff totems here they come so come uh, just looking for different ways uh, prioritizing targets is part of the fun zone I mean the fun zone is not a joke we take it very seriously and um, we have uh, you know instead of you just killing whatever is in front of you, what we know going back to 2016, what the game told us was good. There was a spark mm -hmm. of fun that we felt like we could steer into even more in controlled instances to be able to break up the pacing. That's it. Like, I just had a full-on fight where I was killing dudes in a tight little space, and it was really fun. I don't want to go to the next space and do the exact same thing. You know, so what we want to have is puzzle pieces in place to be able to break up the experience and, and, and change the pace of the fight. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Jason O'Connell did an awesome job here of, of uh, prototyping uh, exactly one of the best case scenarios, you know, uh, for this is an introduction to the buff totem and, uh, and a big credit to uh, the designers, uh, you know, Robbie, uh, uh, Roberto and all those guys uh, for putting it together. Uh, I, I just think the, the, uh, the, so much of what it takes to communicate, we're constantly communicating things to you. And so, uh, it, it's it's a big credit to the effects team and everyone too that you you very clearly can identify it in the space you know what you need to do totally. there's nothing more frustrating than a mechanic that is kind of hard to understand yeah um, and I love it too how like the coolest thing to me about the buff totems isn't the fact that you get you know uh, stronger enemies that are buff that become even faster but I love how you can take enemies that are fodder enemies and all of a sudden it's like everything is two or three times as much of a threat. You have to keep your distance. You have to find that buff totem. You have to hit that buff totem with that beefy army yours. Like, I love the fact that it just like changes, like even just temporarily, the way that you like in, basically approach the encounter. And as soon as you crush the buff totem, like you get a little reprieve because you're like, all right, everything's still dangerous, but now at least it's like the pace I'm used to. You know what I mean? So I love that there's like multiple layers to it in the fact that like there's the before you find the buff totem and like when you're desperately trying to find it and then there's the after both still are dangerous but like it's just the fact that like you said too look at that like the the, the effects that are on oh, that prowler right now is out for blood like the effects on him it's like very clear that he is moving fast af i love how you're just like oh, should i collect the power-ups or should i uh and i love too how it's always that guessing game of all those teleporters i love the level design there where it's like it's behind one of these there's a lot of cookies there's a lot of goodies Ooh. I mean Denied on that one. All right, there we go. We found it. So, Buff totem yeah, found. so a little little story behind that. Yeah. Um, so this moment, uh, prowlers, prowlers. We had more prowlers in there. Little secret: possessed prowlers are crazy, and obviously, and um, at one so point buff. there was more. And at the very end, we saw UR feedback, and we try to track where people get stuck. You know, where, stuck is like. I tell people, like, I don't, I don't care if they die. I mean, mm -hmm. if they die and they feel like they know why, that's great. But there's certainly a point where, you know, frustration can boil over to just flat out frustration and yeah. not engagement and overshoot the mark. Totally. So, uh, and and you're always just trying to, like, it. That's a subjective that line, right? opinion. To, yeah. to some people, you know, a jump puzzle might be too hard. To others, it's a piece of cake. So, yeah. But in general, we felt like uh, there was a lot of prowlers in there at one point, and it was awesome. It's very hard for me to divorce myself from my opinion of what I think. So, you know. Of course. I know the game. I'm good at the game. You know, uh, clearly like one of the best players who's ever done it. And and so <laughs> and 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 uh, I I loved the number of prowlers that were in there. But yeah. but you know, we were watching the feedback. It's like we had we had to dial it back. And honestly, some of the encounters are just one or two prowlers away from being a little bit too hard. And then we purposely uh, trying to keep the landmarking in there. Uh, it was good that it was obscure. I love that. I've done this. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. Like, and it's like, for do the you last, remember which telephone? I've been playing this now for three years. <laughs> yeah. And I think in the course of three years, I've played that encounter, I don't know how many times, a yeah. hundred times. It's yeah. a ridiculous amount of times. Yeah. And um, and I still don't know exactly which one it is. You know, like, I, I just forget uh, which one it is. And I love that. I mean, yeah. I, think it, I think it helps. Uh, I mean, it's not impossible to figure out which no. one it is. But it is just cool that, you know, the, the, the uh, experience can be continually uh engaging no matter how many times you do it 
And I, I love um, the fact that, like, remember, you, you, we talked about this in another uh, in another stream that we've already done, of how you always say, like, you want to give the player, like, one more thing than they're capable of juggling at the same time? That is the secret sauce of, of how we do things. Always one more thing. Sometimes we give you just enough sometimes we give you too little and yeah. sometimes we give you slightly more than you could handle and yeah. that's how we gauge like the pacing of the experience i mean in dlc one we're doing more than you can handle more often you mm -hmm. know because it is a it is a higher level experience because it's an expansion yeah. but in this game a single hell knight in a hallway we call that like a white belt encounter that's meant that's meant to make you feel good about yourself you're yeah. going to level him you're gonna walk out of there and feel like you're God, yeah. and then an encounter like that is is uh one just one more thing than you can handle. You know right. what I mean? And, and kind of keeps you on your toes, and you and you really have to be pushing forward in order to succeed. So what are we picking here for for a rune? Uh, I the the faster glory kill I already got. So yeah. I'm pretty much gonna roll with the runes that I have for the rest of the game. For for fans of the game, you know that the uh, the hold in midair thing will allow you to take out weak points uh, pretty easily. Personally, I think that that tutorial should actually show the player taking out a weak point. I think right. we need to update that, Josh. The, the, <laughs> you uh, heard that. <laughs> you heard it here first. It's coming down the pipeline. It might not be the next build. It might not be the build after that, but it's coming. Because this is yeah, what we I do. We, we look at... Hugo looks we're, at the game for the 9,000th time, and he goes, on 9,001, I think maybe this one thing should be tweaked a little. Yes, yes. The... Yeah. the um, oh, in Power Demons. Nice. Uh, cool. The the um, so we are going to update the game with a quick scoping tutorial, uh, and we are going to update the game with fake. Th there is a quick swapping tutorial, uh, basic quick swapping. This is basic quick swapping. All I'm doing is tapping R1, you know. And by the way, to the fans of the game, and, and Mayo and I had a conversation about this, mm -hmm. and I think it's important to to talk about is that uh, you don't have to quick swap when you when you watch our top players yeah. play. Uh, and, and there's lots of them. They're going ape shit. You don't yeah. have to do that. Like right, that right. is, that is when you watch Josh play, he's, he's playing at a hyper advanced level. He's doing an ultra nightmare one. You know, this is like next level excellence. Uh, the game is definitely not balanced. The base game to require you to be switching hyper switching. I call it hyper switching, uh, like where you're doing it between like three and four weapons. Uh, we gotta get the lawyers on that. We gotta <laughs> trademark that. That's good. Sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> you, you could play the whole game. On up to ultra violence, I would say, with not even quick switching at 100%. all, you know, because yeah. uh, you could ice bomb, you could grenade, mm -hmm. you could burn. Like if you just use the tools and all the way up to nightmare, I would say, yeah. uh, if you just use the tools as they are prescribed to you, you could be successful. Yeah. Uh, basic quick switching of just simply tapping R1 or cycling through two guns, which is something you would do in any game. Uh, I would recommend it, but not required is, is what I'd say. What What is at, and we're actually updating the game with this little piece of, uh, of uh, information that's going to be in DLC 2, it'll go into the base game, uh, is like what the game does require is full use and understanding of your upgraded tools and abilities. Like you need to be using not every mod, mm -hmm. but if you're not ice bombing and grenading and burning and taking out weak points and blood punching, you're not going to succeed. You yeah. know, like you, you got to just do the basics. Right. And if you can do the basics and combine them together, you're going to dominate and you don't have to worry about not being, you know, like to matrix as you walk through and you know, like, right. which I think is amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey Kyle, all those juicers, Zan, of course, like when you watch their streams, when you watch them play, like it's hard to even tell what weapon is coming out Yeah. next. What just got fired. It's just like stacking the damage as fast as legitimately the game can handle switching weapons between a, B, C, D, E, F, G. But the cool thing is, is like Hugo just pointed out, like the same button that's the weapon wheel for, for controller players or for, for keyboard and mouse players, whatever the last weapon you switch to, instead of holding it for the weapon wheel, if you just tap it, it'll always just switch back and yeah. forth between the last two weapons, which is super handy, especially when you're, you're in the middle of shit and you just can't think, wait, what's the perfect tool right here? Like, I just need to do damage. Something's in front of me. I need to get it out of the way, you know? And, and you'll watch as I play a lot. You're like, yes, I'm doing basic weapon switching quite a mm -hmm. bit because why not? I mean, and also I played a lot of battle mode, uh, obviously. And, and um, the, uh, you know, you, you definite. So everything I just said yeah. about weapon switching not being required for, yeah. the, for the base game, which is true. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely required for battle mode. Like yeah. don't step on the battle mode field without being very competent yeah yes you, you got to be proficient you yeah. know so again and do i think that on an ultra nightmare run 
you should know how to quick switch. Yep. That, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. That, I don't think that's, that's an story. option. Yeah. I don't think no, you, no, I, I would love Nightmare. to see someone not quick switch and beat Ultra Nightmare. That's no, the new no, run, yeah, guys. We want to see and it. That's, Do it. That's what people have to aspire to in yeah. Doom Eternal. I mean, yeah. that's that's why I say it's not required, but then by all means, it's like it's it's what you can aspire to to be able to beat the game on the hardest settings. You yeah. know, Ultra Nightmare runs where you real or I mean DLC Ultra Nightmare run, Master Level Ultra Nightmare run. I mean, like, yeah, you you probably need to be doing that. But but uh, but even then, I don't think that it demands much more than basic quick switching. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, what is critical, and I I pause right there because I just did it is. Um, you saw that, like, at any given time in Doom Eternal, you can real you can reacquire like half or if not all of your resources if you're smart. When when enemies are grouped together, I can ice bomb them, and if my yeah. ice ice bomb is upgraded, I'm going to get health right. when they die. And if yeah. I burn that group at the same time, I'm getting health and armor. And then if I kill them or chainsaw one of them, you know, I'm just getting all of these resources, ammo, health, armor, uh, at the same time. So it is less about you know, hyper hyper switching and mm -hmm. just more about understanding the and right. knowing how to use your, your tools. I, there's a 100%. guy uh, who I talked to on Facebook, Gerard Smith, and uh, I asked him about his engagement with the game because he was he's he was vocal. I mean, he's a mm -hmm. fan of the game. He's a big fan of 2016, and and he didn't like Eternal for the first week. Mm -hmm. And when you guys complain about the game, just know I I read all of your. Oh quotes. my god, I track Hugo really I, does. I'm like, hey. I track this is the thing, yes. and I'm like, Hugo's like, look, I've already talked to the guy. Here's the thing. He wasn't, and I was like, damn, Hugo is everywhere. So, so uh, I, I wanted to ask him, like, what mm -hmm. the difference was, and it was really cool because, like, and I knew this would happen. This was what yeah. we hoped for in development, is that uh, he, he didn't want to meet the game. Uh, he, he, he was playing it a certain way, and through, through honestly, the, he said the excellent footage that people were putting out there, uh, he learned how to play the game. Uh, he started. He started just uh, playing the game the way the way it was telling him how to play it. You know, sure. at, at a basic level. You know, right. we, we're not overly prescriptive of like, you know, use this exact mod in this right. way. But like, right, right, right. you know, the basics of like burning, icing, you know, grenading, uh, chainsaw, weak pointing, and, and chainsawing. And you know, yeah. and he said once he started doing that, it, you know, his, his engagement with the game like skyrocketed, and he said he likes it. You know. Uh, quite a bit more than 2016 so yeah. i do i do feel like uh and that was awesome you know like and and look if it doesn't grab you that that's fine too sure. you know like yeah. but but uh once you get there you do kind of achieve this like flow state in doom you know that's why we call it the zone the fun zone you know yeah. like you, you it it takes a second and i'll admit that it's actually even a little bit more complex for me to do in a mouse and keyboard but mm -hmm. the the um once you, your brain starts to click in, I mean, you know, Josh, everybody knows, it just becomes like muscle memory, oh, you totally. know, and, and, um, and then it feels amazing. Like yeah. you just, you're, you're just laying so much damage out into the world as you're taking their life and they're giving you life at the same time as these resources are going everywhere. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's so satisfying. Um, yeah. But, but like you said, I mean, I love it. <laughs> Like, you've made this point multiple times of, like, you guys with Eternal versus with 2016 where you were just proving out that this is the new id, you know, we can take this franchise that hasn't been alive and well in a really long time and both pay homage to it and then, you know, take it a new direction and do new things that make a new id. But in Eternal, specifically, you said multiple times that you guys wanted to make a game that was worth your time to master. And, you know, we talk about the black belt analogy. We talk about martial arts a lot. We all know you're a jujitsu master. And and in the words and in the, the, the stylings <laughs> of, of Sensei uh, 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 Martinson, I'll just say that, like, that is kind of the beauty of it is like, it's like the first time you ever go to a martial arts class, like they give you the gi and you're like, oh, this is cool. I want to wear this. This is tight. And then the, the sensei throws your ass and starts tossing it, and you're like, I don't understand why this is just like, looks so easy for them and it's so hard for me. But it's one of those things, just like martial arts, if you stick with it, if you start downloading these lessons, start like putting them into, committing the time to putting them into muscle memory, all of a sudden that feeling like a brown belt, feeling like a black belt, it's like ecstasy in games, right? Like there is, it, it's, it's hard to even describe because there's, there's so little other games that offer the same kind of like, mastery curve you know what i mean absolutely and i just picked up the thing i didn't want to pick up the the uh <laughs> and i'll go into why i didn't want to pick up in a second the, really the uh so what we're actually doing too is we're gonna we're gonna load up uh a tutorial in that tip where it says uh hey you know congratulations you now have all the tools needed to succeed in doom and mm -hmm. you know we encourage you to combine your weapons and blah 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 yeah uh 
Caco time. You got we're going to have a video playing of our very own James uh, James Dugan Duggan, and uh, and um. I know. I always got to think uh, Thug and Duggan, Thug and Thug and Thug and Thug and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to James. And, and he's he, he's playing. You know, James is a really really good player. I mean, yeah. he's an ultra nightmare tier tier player, mm -hmm. and and he will be demonstrating. He is the the master sensei. Uh, there'll be a little clip of him doing what you know, like a higher skill version of what I'm doing, and just to show people a glimpse. It's kind of like welcome to basketball. It's a really <laughs> cool sport, and let me show you a little clip of Michael Jordan. I love you know, that. to to inspire people yeah. to to say, "Holy cow!" Like, can I do that? Because part of what Gerard told me was that you know he was inspired by the footage that he saw, and so you guys out there who are who are doing your streams. I mean, I've seen red uh, Reddit uh, forums pop up in our gaming mm -hmm. where people have just, you know, bowed down to to the fucking the incredible skill on display by high level Doom Doom Eternal players. Hundred uh, percent. They they just say, dude, it looks amazing. You know, like Doom Eternal played at a high level is really something to to watch. And oh, yeah. uh, and hopefully that footage. I mean, not hopefully it does. I think it inspires people to to want to keep playing. Oh, for uh, sure. I'm all out of. Uh, you gonna give, give him a uh, give him an old frag grenade? I think he's ready. Oh uh -oh, no, target! <laughs> no luck. He's so fast. He's so fast. There it is. I always forget about the alt too because I'm just like again in my brain I'm just like muscle memory says switch to combat shotgun. Make sure you have sticky mod. Insert into the Cacodemon's mouth. Meatball becomes meatball. Tear apart. Done. But yes. I'm like, oh yeah, frag grenade. That is like the other one that it's a little harder to aim if you're not used to doing it all the time, but like works just the same way. So if you're out of ammo like Hugo just was, frag grenade, cacodemon, there is the option of always doing that. And again, once you upgrade that, you get two at all times. So it's a nice, but yeah, exactly like you said, like a lot of us, not all of us, because you know, we were all born at different times. It's crazy. We wanted to be born at the same time so we could all relate to the same things, but we weren't. We were born at different times. So like growing up with like that 90s basketball with Dream Team and stuff, it's like, those things never go away. Like we all thought at some point, like that Gatorade advertisement, whoever you are at Gatorade that figured this out, that be like, Mike, you are, you will live in infamy because it is like the, one of the strongest, most amazing campaigns of all time. Cause we all wanted to be like Mike. Like you see Absolutely. Michael Jordan play basketball and you're like, I love basketball because I love the way he plays it because it's beautiful. And I aspire to be like him. Even if I never get to that court, I'm, it doesn't mean I'm not outside in the middle of the night you know, sweating under a street light, trying to make those fade away J's, like it's happening. Am I wearing Jordans? I am, you know what I mean? And the same goes for stuff like, it started with, you know, old school with, with Thresh and those dudes playing both Doom 2, playing Quake, playing all that stuff, all the guys in the Quake Pro League, and especially you have all of these sweaty juice lords that are in chat right now that stream all the time, and they show you the way Doom Eternal can be played when like the oh, yeah. black belt is just like perma on, like you don't even have to lace it up anymore, it's just like attached at the hip, and you're like, it's inspiring. It makes you want to go in and play more. It makes you want to try some of this crazy stuff. Absolutely. And like, I get, in, I get inspired, honestly. Totally. Like I'll watch, footage and it's just beautiful you know and, and that's uh yeah i honestly that that is how my jiu-jitsu experience was when i first went was i rolled with the guy the the, the black belt in uh my first time and uh he, he basically it was like me playing you know wrestling with my six-year-old and uh <laughs> i found that to be fascinating you yeah. know like uh i was just like what are you doing like, You're like why is this guy it? so easy? No, wait, it's that's what he's thinking. I'm the one getting tossed around like a child. Yeah, and I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, uh, not not to say that I didn't expect to get you know tossed Bobby, around, but yeah. just the way in which it happened, I found it to be fascinating. Uh, just this this control, you know, how how you someone can control uh, what direction and and, and you're, speed you're going and, with. and everything about like yeah. your energy and your flow and you, your intention just going wherever they want it to go, right? Yeah, it's crazy. and. and uh, and, and it, it inspired me to want to keep going. So, so I think, yeah, the, the, the footage of people playing, and that's why we're going to put it into the game, uh, is, is something that we know uh, people, you know, give them something to shoot for. I don't think uh, everyone who picks up Doom Eternal uh, knows what the game has in store for them. Sure. You know? Or, like, knows that there are, like, they can play the game and enjoy it for all of the the beauty and the design and the art because like every time you look at anything like we talked about the the <laughs> you made the disney reference every character you look at like has personality so just like all of the millions of ways you can glory kill them all the arsenal all, everything is beautiful and gorgeous and fun to look at and to play but like you said it's like and then there's the other tier where you start going up and up and up and going like well 
it is fun to play and I played through the campaign and I loved it, but like there's also like all these levels of like, oh, there's mastery on every part of this game, on traversal, on Absolutely. the arsenal, on how you use it, on how you combo it. And that doesn't even just extend to like all of the amazing speedrunners we have out there because you know we have love for all the speedrunners. I see Bite Me in chat. I see Devo in chat. Like, I mean, oh, Bite Me is one of the one of the grandmasters, dude. Oh, yeah. I mean, that guy is crazy at the game. Yeah. I mean, I remember... I, I know all these guys. Yeah, you know these guys. But that's the thing. It's like, the beauty is, is when you guys made this game where it's able to be enjoyed by, like, a more casual FPS fan who just wants that AAA experience and they can get it. And they can get the satisfaction of, like, still a level of mastery, even at the very bottom tier of just going, like, I'm shooting the things in front of me and I'm doing it kind of efficiently. But then it's like, like you said, it's like, this game has given the the... What do I want to say? It's like it's past the baton of the fact that there can be Jordans, there can be Pippins, there can be Olajuwon's, yep. there can be, you know, Magic Johnson's. And it's like to see that happen from everybody at, at N Bethesda has been like, it's like both the most humbling and cool thing. And like kudos to all you guys for knowing that like the hardest thing to do is to make something that has those levels, I would think. You know what I mean? That has it so it's like at the base level, you can play it, enjoy it, be impressed by it, be like, this was cool, this was fun, it was, you know. It was like my favorite FPS game this year or whatever. But then it's like the fact that you made enough layers in it in combat and creativity that you can have on like how you traverse and how you actually go through combat is like bananas. So kudos to everybody on the team. It is fun. Yeah. We love it. What is this? What is this in front of you? Because this looks like well, a super, this looks like a gore nest, you know, speaking of the super gore nest from 2016, but this is different. What is this? This is a uh, secret encounter, so obviously you have to complete the encounter uh, in a certain amount of time. And, and part of the, the combat puzzle of, uh, of Doom is making sure that you have this, the uh, resources available to do this. So I'll prepare my ice bomb. Now, my ice bomb is on my left thumbstick. I would, I would highly recommend uh, players uh, go to their controls, mm -hmm. go down to their ability to adjust their key bindings. Like and for customize those layer bindings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Customize your layer bindings. Customize yeah. your controller. People spent a lot of time getting that stuff to work in mm -hmm. the game. These <laughs> UI guys, AO, Jamin, you know, Dave Rose and his incredible team, Mikey. Like these are these guys. Peter. These guys work real hard on getting all this stuff in there for you. Um, and so. Uh, the ability to switch, notice how I'm switching between grenade and ice bomb uh, with ease. Yeah. Uh, you really want to be able to do that. So I just want to make sure that I could snap real quick between these two things. I'm going to make sure that ice bomb is ready and I'm going to uh, freeze whatever is there. This meaty boy Mancubus who was there for all of like and three seconds. And then we're going to kill him. Carcass, fodder, it's all got to go. And I love this, like again, I love the way that you guys mix this up because like you fought all of these things before, but there's that risk reward of going, you have a very fixed amount of time. You have to do it in that amount of time. There is a reward for doing it, which gets you points that end up helping you upgrade everything about your Slayer. And the cool thing is too, is if you, if you screw it up and you're like, damn, I didn't get it in time, you can just pull it again, right? But again, the resources will be less because you just spent a lot trying to do it. So it's like, again, it comes back to that loop of resource management of like, what do you have to do to get more health, to get more ammo, to get more uh, armor? Which is something you just always got to have in the back pocket. You always got to be ready for it. I love the blood, so, so the far, blood punch on the pinky. I, I love it. I'll never get sick of it. Yes. It's just correct. So far, uh, I've had uh, no real uh, blood punch failures, but we know that the blood punch is missing a little bit. Oh, mm -hmm. so, so by the way, the thing about uh, the chain gun, everything has its use, right? So yeah. if we go to Codex... And and we go over to Jedimanj, mm -hmm. and then we look at the Dread Knight. We will see the Chain Gun can quickly falter this demon. If we look at the Hell Knight, the Chain Gun quickly falter this demon. So, uh, if you if you keep digging into Doom Eternal, you'll see that. But there's everything a time and a place, has, right, for all these weapons. That's right, and I say that, and I finish him off with a super shotgun. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Old habits, <laughs> man. Old habits. That's right. But no, that's a really good point. It's like, again, I, I think that's another huge difference. Like, obviously, Doom 2016, there were certain weapons that were best case scenarios. But like, we talked about this before, and we'll talk about it every time we play the game. It's like, in Eternal, the way that you guys at id Software took 
basically the Swiss Army knife, which is like the full arsenal, which you can look at so beautifully in like the weapon wheel, and it's even color coordinated to know what ammo type it takes in, in Eternal, which is a nice addition. Oh, but that was a lot of work. I Remember bet when that it was. Weapon wheel for the yeah, first time. Yeah, it was just and, like gray, and, and it just went around, and you're like, "What well, the hell is that?" I remember at the the demo. Mm -hmm. What is with all the color? Right. I knew that like once people played, they would see why the weapon wheel is the way it is. Like it takes me a millisecond mm -hmm. to know. Guess what? Guess what? Guns are out of ammo, guys. So here's the thing. This is a perfect example. See yeah. the screen? Yeah. Uh, if we're gonna push you. As far as we're going to push you and really, you know, make you feel like a ninja and all that great stuff, mm -hmm. man, uh, you've got, we've got to be communicating. Again, it's a race car. You've got to be communicating information about where your resource is at yeah. uh, really fast, you know? Yeah. So when you bring up the wheel, bang, you know, two seconds, I'm, I'm out of resources. Yeah. You know, I, I love that too, because like everybody, whether you know it or not, the, the HUD is the heads up display, but I feel like in Eternal, it's especially a heads up display. Cause again, when you're driving that Ferrari at maximum speed, you're doing double dash, you're chaining things, you're going so fast. You need to just be able to glance at everything you see and just get the information you need. Just download the data without having to stop and pause and look away from like the center of the screen. Which is again why Hugo said in the DLC, what is coming to the reticle, Hugo? In DLC two? left. Oh, I left that. I got to go The Sentinel battery? Yeah, you got to get it. You gotta I, go get I need that. But you were saying, we were talking about the heads-up display. You were talking about the reticle. You were saying what is coming. This is last week. Just to recap, you were saying there's a new addition to the reticle system coming from the DLC. Oh, it, and the fact that I don't have it right now is driving me crazy. There are many things so about this it. experience. Yeah, <laughs> I can't stand. I need I need the new weapon. Always badly. forward, never backward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the fact that I don't have that right now is is driving me nuts. I don't even remember where this is. The uh, the yeah, I I uh, I'm very much itching to be using the the HUD, the race car HUD. Man, you get so used to that. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just oh my god, did I skip it again? Yeah, I turn did around, skip go it backwards. Again. It's you gotta go from here. I think it's on the right at this point. Is that right? It's the other breakable. Through there, take a look at your map. Let's let's pick at the auto map. Let's take a little look at risk. Oh, there you go. A little traverse will never hurt anybody. That's not true. It hurts, okay, because it's toxic. But there are <laughs> counters to that. You can get the little uh, little radiation. There you go. Give you some protection there for a period of time. But yeah, there is a new sexy. In DLC 2, which the Ancient Gods Part 2 will talk about more when we have things like dates and stuff to talk about. But you know it's coming. You know it's what it is working on. But they have made a new update to the HUD, the heads-up display that specifically adds things to the center reticle. That at first you might think, well, you can't put more in the center reticle. It's where I'm looking. It's going to get in the way. How quickly you not only adjust to this, but start realizing that having things like the gas and how many pips you have, when the blood punch is up, whether flame belch is up, having those in the center of your vision just becomes so second nature that right now Hugo is playing and going, wait, how many pips do I have? Because I don't know where to look because it's not right in front of me because I'm a race car and I want everything to be like right there on that speedometer. Oh yeah. But it's, it's coming. It's, uh, it's, it's really easy to use. Yeah, it's slick. All right, so we got Dread Knight and I think, is there some carcasses behind me too? Look at this, I love it. Got the blood punch, he's on fire. Glory kill goes out, now it's carcass time. <laughs> I like how they tried to get the whip out, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't <laughs> enough time. There you got wrecked. Um ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so question time. Here's a question from chat. This is Ben Langley. Question is this. Because this, we were talking about uh, Warhammer 40k, this is tying into that. The question is this. Is hell its own living entity, or is it an or is it an extension of the Dark Lord's power and will? And then as a side note, they said, I collect 40K as well, so that's really cool to see. Other than that, thanks for making such a great game. It is an ex it's actually a really interesting question, and it's going to be answered in DLC 2 in more depth, but I can say it is an absolute extension of the Dark Lord. Ooh, uh, I love it. I love it. So, so we ended up getting some, uh, here's, here's, some hints out here's there. Here's the egg. Okay. Uh, that might not be... Uh, what else is an extension of the Dark Lord's power? Ooh. That's the question. I want to see some videos theorized. That's Ooh. a big hint. And when you watch DLC 2, you're going to uh, 
you're gonna know what that that means so uh it's it's actually pretty cool get those videos going yes, on i love the videos i love the videos yeah. guys i love when you guys make videos i know we've i saw there was a, uh there was a, go ahead yeah, yeah. there was a little uh, tiff mm -hmm. amongst our community recently mm -hmm. about uh, what i saw some some, some our uh, community some tiff no never what about what about <laughs> Now I think that I, it, it, you know, I have to say, guys, like, it, it is on the forums, and and on the on the uh, Discord, the Discord, and everything yeah. across the board, guys. I think we have such a healthy community. I love it, and even even the the little back and forth between uh, the videos that I saw this week. I mean, the way you guys handled that was just so professional and awesome. You know, 100%. like, uh, I I'd like to, I I really appreciate that. You know, and, and I honestly I appreciate the honesty across the board. I mean, we're all pretty honest with each other. You know, like sure. you guys. You guys send us constructive feedback all the time, and you know mm -hmm. that we're listening. Yeah. So, so. Uh, I love how you're just like, I will not do the buff totem. I will not go to the sore lag pit. I will kill every buff <laughs> demon. It is my job. It is my. It is my I, mantra. I should... Go so, to the sore so lag pit. Embrace of, it. Part of what uh, you know in, engagement is all about mm -hmm. is just keeping you thinking. Obviously, so that's what these things are for. Why are they here? Uh, it's not so they. Hey, we really like Mario. It's it's just so like we can make. Uh, traversing through every inch of the environment, you know, really satisfying. That's that's really all it is we want to do is is just make it uh, a satisfying experience. So little secret, it Let's used to be in here. Yeah. For, for the first couple of years. The buff totem was in there. Yeah, buff po totem Damn. was in there. Okay. And, and, cool. uh, and then through testing, uh, there's nothing worse than having an endless spawn of buffed gargoyles. And, <laughs> yeah, and, that could get frustrating eventually. Yeah, and, and people couldn't, uh, they couldn't put a stop to it. And, <laughs> and uh, so we, we moved it out there. Okay. Uh, get your, uh, get your you know, manhole cover. Guy, with a lot of the feedback is always like, do they have to keep spawning? Do we have to hide the thing? What about this? Like, you just, you, we're never gonna, I, I appreciate you guys applauding us for sticking to our guns. We're never gonna just do things like that's not, that's not why people play video games. Right. You right, know that, that would be like is I'm, I'm playing through Hades right now. I'm pretty mm -hmm. deep. Uh, yeah. I'm playing through Blasphemous, man. Big shout out to Blasphemous. Dude, that game. Dude, yeah. Talk about jump puzzles. Yeah. That game is punishing. It's like, can you not do this jump puzzle? Well, yeah. hopefully you can eventually because it's not getting easier. This is it. This is the game. Yeah. I have I have my my nerd station set up here and it's really satisfying. But nice. I can rotate through meetings. To uh, to messing with my Warhammer new toys to uh, to Blasphemous, I've been playing that quite a bit in between meetings, and uh, it's just so good. But but uh, in any one of those games, are you going to tell me that there aren't moments where I wish the game would bend to my wishes? You know what I mean? Like, come on, guys, you make it really far in Hades, and you got to go all the way back. Like, you don't think that? Well, you know, maybe there's this thing where right. I could get this thing. Like, it doesn't always have to be like. It's like the point. I, I mean, the, the the game has to stay true. Uh, to, to its formula, to, to what's making it uh, satisfying to play. I mean, I, I love that about it. For sure. Um, so, yeah, just just notice how instead of me just ripping through that, you know, I, I do just have to – all of the – notice all these things are just making me pause, think, take a second, you know, strategize just a little bit. Big shout-out to Chad Mossolder, our lead uh, sound designer who writes the lines for the UEC spokesperson. For I didn't know Chad wrote and, the lines in that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's if you guys work at id, you're gonna work on everything. Yeah. You know, I, when it comes to like stuff like that, I mean, Chad was—he uh, wrote comic books and and uh, different things, and and he's also a great musician and, and uh, obviously awesome sound designer. And uh, and I said, that's awesome. Can we? Can you write these lines? <laughs> Chad's like, What's amazing. the direction? I'm like, she needs to be obnoxious. <laughs> uh, so so. What uh, talking about the the UAC spokesperson? The the yeah. uh, and I keep passing these up because I don't really need them. But uh, it's okay, you can talk about them when you're grabbing them. Punch and Reeve. It's a blood yeah, punch shockwave drop health. I mean, again, if you're starting oh, you know to what? upgrade hey. nothing but blood punch, it's really good. What were you gonna say? Yeah. Yes. Oh, hey, don't let me forget yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the Slayer Gate. I won't. I won't. We'll get there after the blue key. We're, we're doing it. That's the that's the plan. And we're getting the blue key soonish. Um. Dan Galf the Cray. So did we get the blood fun blood punch fix yet? No, we didn't. We are testing things know. eternally. So it, yeah, inter but internally, guys, it's uh, feeling amazing. Yeah. Like I haven't had any issues. But listen, it, it we're gonna have to test it at all levels, you know, because like 
what's going on with FPS frame rates and blah blah blah. So sure. like let's let's make sure that it's operating on all levels. But yeah, so far, you know, so good. Yeah. Um, another question we have here. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, Oblek, Oblek, uh, wanted to, he asked in Spanish, but luckily we have a translation for that. Thank you, Manny. He was, the question was, uh, basically are these questions coming from Twitch, YouTube, or Discord? They're coming from all three places. So just keep asking wherever you're watching and wherever you're having this conversation and we'll find it. Uh, here's another question. Go ahead. Sorry. You were going to say something. Hit it. Oh, did I leave another one? Man, I'm dumb. Which one? Uh, I just keep leaving Prater, tools. Prater suit talking? Yeah. What? I mean, I left. this I game is it. very forgiving about that in the sense that it isn't a thing where there isn't enough if you miss one. Uh, oh, I think I could get back up there, though. Uh, Damn. Unless you go completely the other way around. Like you go back from where you've been before. Let's see, let's see. Oh, yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Um. Okay, the question is, this is from, let me see if I say this right, Lex Copeland. Hugo, is there a game design decision people initially thought was bad, but then people realized was it good? And then did you feel smug about it? <laughs> That's the question. Oh yeah. Well, first of all, nobody wants a smug director, so sure, the sure. Uh, or or anybody to be smug, right? For that matter. But but uh, um, not really. I mean, you know, overall everybody's always going to question everything because that's what you want your co-workers to do. I mean, nobody wants to be surrounded by, by yes people. You know, I mean, I think that's a recipe uh, for, for disaster. So I tell the guys all the time, creatively speaking, you know, always give me your honest opinion. And, and uh, sure, I mean, there's times uh, where, we, where we're not sure of things or, uh, you know, hey, are we sure? We're just, that's us just being a good team, you know, and uh, making sure that we are uh, considering all the possibilities. And, um, yeah. Uh, but overall, honestly, most of the time, if something was high risk and it ends up working out, I'm less smug and more relieved. <laughs> That's I'm just like, thank God. Totally fair. You're <laughs> just like, yeah, see, it worked. Oh, my God, I can't Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but that, that's I mean... the thing. Like, you don't want to be – like, the other thing is, like, guys, be, be bold. You know, like, you, you don't name, – name me something that's memorable that's not bold. Nothing. Not, right. not, you know – Nobody plays something or watches something or listens to something and says, you know, I really ha I really like how they didn't take chances. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> you know, it was, it was like, it was really just super, man, we got a sick sense of humor. It, it was, uh, <laughs> by the way, quick note, there used to be a ton of uh, lost souls in here. Oh, my and, God. And um, we should have kept them in there. <laughs> that, was, that was probably, that was probably my fault. The, uh. <sighs> No, this is good. This is that insight. And, and this is the perfect example of just like you said, it's like there's being humble and sticking to your guns and taking chances. And then sometimes there's like, ah, we should have been a little more bold there. Maybe that was yeah, we, just enough. Exactly. Like, you know, and, uh, but that's, that's it. You know, like, yes, can you go too far? Absolutely. But like, uh, and sometimes you have to risk doing that. But like, if you don't, if you don't, and don't just be, you know, loud and, mm -hmm. and and bold for the sake of doing it i mean like it, it it being bold simply means you know think think your your design plan through whatever it is your brand your youtube channel your yeah. you know what, whatever it is you're your doing comic, just whatever have, you're working but, on yeah, your music, yeah but, whatever. but once you once you've thought it through and you have confidence in what it is you got to have conviction don't don't water it down and and the worst thing you could ever do is try to make something for everybody mm -hmm. nothing is for everyone you know uh, my brother thinks Avatar is terrible. I think Avatar is amazing. You know, Man. like not everybody likes the last episode of, uh, not everybody likes the show The Last Airbender, mm -hmm. and those people are dead wrong. So like, it, but it it doesn't matter. Like, you know, like yeah, I don't I mean, think that they should alter these properties to try to please everyone. So, for sure. you know, uh, on the subject of like any decisions that we were thankful worked out the way they did. I mean, it, there's a lot of them simply because. Uh, we definitely try to be bold at id software we have to be come on look at look at our look at the founders of our company our forefathers that's right i mean these guys john romero and carmack and all those guys i mean they yeah. were they were bold and kevin cloud who's still here the guy is still right. at id getting it done okay you have the slayer gate now you have the key 
So now it's going to be gate time very soon. VV soon. Because you told me to remind you that we're doing the Slayer Gate. Yes. And I'm here to remind you we're doing the Slayer Gate because you have the key. So after we do this encounter, I think it's time. Ah. I hate when I fall. I was going to try to be cool there. <laughs> hey, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Of all the things, I mean, I could go on forever about, like, in Eternal, the kind of homages and, like, the, the newness that came into all these enemies that weren't in Doom 2016 but were in Doom 2 and came back here. But the Arachnotron, like, it just makes me happy. It's so beefy. I love the the laser turret. I love the fact that it has those, you know, differences when as soon as you disable it, it, it changes its attack pattern. They're just I, amazing I, looking. I, the only thing I notice is that on Hurt Me Plenty, mm -hmm. and, uh, and again, this is just more honest developer yeah, speak, you know, sure. I'll tell you what I love, I'll tell you what I, I'm thinking about, is mm -hmm. that, uh, the, Ooh, we're the, doing uh, I noticed it. that me medium, like, you know, people who don't, aren't skilled in FPS, they have a little bit of difficulty uh, with um, precision under pressure, yeah. like trying to hit a precise part of an AI while that AI is shooting at them is a little bit of a choke point. And I think on Hurt Me Plenty and maybe I'm Too Young to Die or maybe just I'm Too Young to Die, mm -hmm. we could probably dial down the accuracy of the Arachnotron's turret to allow those players into the fun zone a little bit more easily. Because I'll watch some Twitch streams and I think like, you know what? That it thing is so accurate, right? Yeah. Well, it wouldn't compromise the game for you guys mm -hmm. if we did that on the lower difficulty settings. It would simply mean like, I know that a lot of guys in the discords you know they're always telling me like oh man we got a lot of new black belts a lot of new great slayers coming in and you want that it's the new crop of great players you know uh so i'm t i'm considering that like a little bit like maybe maybe tuning it down uh, the accuracy of the uh, arachnotron's turret on the lowest difficulties but again the the and i and i think we could get away with that without compromising uh you know our, our design of overall of the game because you're still encouraged to take that thing out the reason why it's tuned the way it is is we want people to be like, oh my god, you know, this thing is nuts. Like, and you want it to move just, you around, right? Like, you want it to make it so you're not well, just standing in front of it. Move you around and be highly motivated to destroy it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and and what I love is that on all difficulties, nightmare runs, ultra nightmare runs, mm -hmm. even with people's massive DPS combos, yeah. I'll still see people taking the time to take it out, which yeah. makes me so happy. <laughs> it is like, true. It's I funny, would be right? So like. Disappointed yeah, I would honestly be so disappointed if you guys on Ultra Nightmare just stopped shooting weak points. That would kill me. It, uh, it is one of the ones that, like, that it still happens because people will shortcut certain ones. Like sometimes you'll see, you know, on Ultra Nightmare runs with the Mancubus, they'll just delete the Mancubus, or maybe even the same with the Revenant right. because those are like smaller, harder to hit, you know, little areas of. And not that they can't do it, obviously they can, but it's just like well, what I see though is people will will. Uh, this is where you know you're dealing with a real ninja. Mm -hmm. Is that they'll actually take out the weak points in their combos yeah. because you know that you get a guaranteed uh, falter for each uh, for each, for each hit. point. So yeah. I'll actually see people raining down terror but taking out weak points while dropping their combos, which is it's like next level. Awesome. Yeah. And it's also like, I, I love when they take it into consideration, they're like, I could do the highest DPS version of this and just delete this thing in front of me, or I could challenge myself because I've done that already and then go, the way this game is designed with the fact that every single time you hit a weak point, it can cause a falter. What if I do that for every single enemy I come across? So the Ultra Nightmare yeah. Run is even that more like high tier well, because it's like more challenging, right? And how do you, like, I, I find that, you know, when I'm playing on Nightmare, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I really do not like to leave weak points lingering. That, yeah. That's kind of how I play is I just think that the, the, the weak point that I leave, like if I've got a chance to pop off an Arachnotron's turret, I'll yeah. take it, yeah. you know, especially early on. Like maybe I find that, uh, especially on a controller where your mobility is somewhat limited, mm -hmm. the uh, compared to mouse and keyboard in terms of like being able to rotate 360 degrees super fast, is that like you got to kind of like as you move around, if you linger too long anywhere, I mean, you're so dead. Mm -hmm. And uh, do I have a blood punch? No, I don't. And um, <laughs> So, so like right now, if that was a nightmare. My ass would be dead because I sat there for too long. But uh, so, so as I move through the space, you know, deleting weak points is so key because it, then it makes moving through the space uh, that that much safer, you know. And I mean, I think a lot of people love that the Arachnotron, like it's such a big uh, 
it's such a big target for that like the weak point is so big on him and he and it's so centered that it's just like it's just so satisfying to go you're different now i can i can focus on maybe not just solely you but right when they come out as soon as they jump onto the board it's just so satisfying to go flick and be like all right now the threat has been like halved even though you still can't get close to him and even though they still have some range attacks yeah there's just something about the fact that it's centered on them it's a really big hitbox and it's just like they're a bigger enemy and it's really satisfying to pop off and again shout outs to chad and the team because the sound design on every single weak point when it gets knocked off is so satisfying it's just w one of those things that you just get used to hearing those sounds in eternal you know like when the blood punch comes back when you have flame belch coming back when you hit the weak points like it's just these weird like i don't know pavlovian things that tick that when you hear them and you're like yes yes satisfying oh, it's, more it's, you know? it's it's the best yeah it feels so good uh one one thing too that that uh, little background there is that mm -hmm. uh had to do it over again we'd make it so you can't leave until you get that thing because i've seen people run through that oh. and not grab that thing i've done that i ran out of there once you forgot the imperium key and, I, I, I and you're like why, why yeah like oh god it? it's okay so before <laughs> we leave uh where are we at with challenges do we have everything do we have the secrets do we know no, there's there's, shit there's all punch. kinds of stuff there, there's so many in this level i think there's like right. 23 total or something oh there's god i left a thing yeah I so left... that's Oh, and I left a secret encounter. There's a secret there. encounter still, yeah. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. All right. <laughs> We're going to get that. it. We're going to get it. All right, time for questions. Next question. Uh, the question is from What's the 24? I think I said that right. Uh, the question is, question for Hugo. We know that the Slayer was submitted to the the div Sorry, let me read this again. We know that the Slayer was submitted to the Divinity Machine, which gave him strength, power, and speed. My question is... Is there a limit to his speed, strength, and power? And if so, what is the limit? Uh, he, I would say certainly there should be some kind of limit, right? I, I would think so. Yeah. Uh, what we what we do have is uh, okay. Is um, oh the the definitive machine. Sorry, it was written as definitity machine on my side. Yeah, the definitive. The div by the way, the the divinity machine is going to be uh, another part of uh, of DLC two. So the, oh, the divinity, the divinity machine, is uh is is going to be a part of the fiction and definitely play a role in that, and and uh, and it will have again. I want to see videos on this. More here's here's a little bit more info. Uh, it, it will have. Uh, I actually I can't say this because then you'll figure stuff out. Okay. Okay, I won't say it. But okay. the the dark the dark. Good catch. Good I catch. Won't say it. I won't say anything. The the deal the DLC two. I start talking. Good I know. Stuff. Chat's like more, it's, more. No, no, no. You're good. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, oh, yeah. That's right. There's this thing up here. So, uh, so yeah. I I gotta think. Well, let's. I mean, come on, guys. Let's nerd out for a second here. Like, I mean, the um, Superman's got limits to his powers. I mean, in the shitty movie, he doesn't. Remember when, like, in <laughs> Superman three, and they just got really lazy, and yeah. he had an eye beam that built the fucking dam. Right. Like and that you're was like, insane. Well. I guess yeah, you're like, what? That's, okay. that's what his eyes do. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> but but uh, we just, by the way, super. Oh, man. And I left something out there, too. I'm crazy. Uh, we just super, super dated ourselves. We did. Superman we like, 3. You remember Richard Superman Pryor. 3? <laughs> Who's Richard Pryor? Oh, that that's hurts Richard. to hear. It hurts to hear that said out loud. The man was a genius. Yeah, he was. So, so uh no, 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 ab absolutely. So I got to think there's limits, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Wolverine's got limits. I mean, sure. who doesn't have limits? Everybody's right. got limits. Uh, no, it's a good answer. Miss Marvel, and, and it, Marvel is not supposed to have limits, I think. Isn't that part of her fiction or something? I think so. I don't know. Chat will tell us if we're wrong. Yes. But uh, are you going to let me up there? But I okay. see shout outs to Midnight, who's in chat, who's one of our just lore mavens. The guy is sitting on a. a, a a pile of speculation and lore that is like biblical length at this point. So check out Midnight the Spartans videos if you haven't already on YouTube because they are amazing. Yeah. Good times and, and just a great guy. Why don't we do a quick roll call of of some of our top guys, Josh? I know okay. you know them all. So yeah. what what else? Oh. Yeah, we got we got we got Midnight, we got Mayo. Yeah, we got I mean, gaming. Yep. If we're on YouTube, uh, all bangers right there. I mean. There's so many. And if we we're going to do Twitch also, I mean, of course, all of our... Go ahead, though. You were going to do more YouTube, I felt like. Hit it. Alston, uh, who's who's coming up. We have a new guy yeah. who 
whose name I god damn it I forget, but he's been churning out some really great content. Uh we have uh uh certainly Cynic the Cynic the original. Is it yeah. Cynic the original? Am I saying that right? Yes, god. I believe it. Now I'm double checking it. Hold on. Cynic, I, I have to tell you, buddy. I love Cynic. When I first saw your videos, I'm like, I don't think he likes us. But I think <laughs> you do like him. So <laughs> I know Turns you're out. just a fan. Hey, it's it's your brand. Yeah, Cynic the your original. Brand to be cynical. Yeah. I like it. Nice. I like your content. I like. Nice. I do like your content. And and uh, it's not a ton of good and then stuff. We have, uh, just so many good guys. Yeah. Uh, no, I mayo, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Big shout outs to Under the Mayo. One of uh, I'll just call it the the Condiment Trilogy because uh, of course you got PND uh, Ketchup and his twin brother Mustard. Of course, Ketchup is the the yeah, Doom totally. Maven. Both of them play Mortal Kombat and a lot of great games. But yeah, the the, the, the Condiment Boys, all of them coming at you hot with some amazing Doom content. All right, I don't think I'm gonna have the time to do this, but let's see. I think you do. I think you can. I believe. Chat believes. Oh, see, there it is. Look at the weapon switching. That super shotgun to ballista, just getting it done. Predator suit points right. coming in hot. What else you got? Oh, I didn't take the stupid thing, and I want to take it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. That was up here. I th that was because we were in the middle of trying to find the buff totem, remember? So we were like, all right, we'll be back yeah. later, but we never came back. <laughs> well, if I, if I whipped out the uh, my, my YouTube right now, I would do the roll call. I'll get that ready for the next one. I want to okay, give okay, our, okay. our community, you guys who give us so much support, yeah. make this stuff for you. Um, you know we do. No one in their right mind would make DLC one uh, the way it is if we weren't making content specifically for you guys. So, yeah, uh, yeah I, I really appreciate. You got Zero Astor. Master always coming in hot. Zero, Zero Master, Master is awesome. Yeah. Of course, Rip and Tear. Uh, we've already know, done uh, Cynical uh, Midnight. Ronin's Renegades. Oh, dude. You know, Ronin's Ronin legend. Awesome. I love Ronin's Renegades. Yeah. By the way, we don't give that place enough love, but that 100%. that is also Discord that I love. Uh, I think the people on there are awesome. Honestly, not necessarily streamers, but just people who I talk to. Mythical, mm -hmm. uh, 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 what's his name? TD Side. This is guy that I play with on Battle Mode all the time, and and he's uh, when I used to play. I haven't played in a while, but yeah. but uh, TD Side, uh, that dude is a beast at that game. There, yeah. there was a handful of guys who I've played with, you know, on on. Uh, where the hell is this thing? Oh my god! <laughs> like like I, I forget every. You know why? Because everything looks like gore. Isn't that the one that you come up from from the jump pad? Uh, am I wrong? Or the the teleporter rather? Let me look at the map real quick. We're gonna do this together, everybody. Go to get to the portal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take the teleporter. Take the teleporter. And then hold on. Yeah, yeah. It's like to the what side is it? No, no, no. It's it's in there. I know it's in There's there, but I think don't you come up? Hold on. Let's see. We're getting okay. we're getting chat. Chat's coming in. Chat's coming in hot. Yeah, tell us what the hell's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help us. Um, I'm I'm old and confused. I don't know where I'm going. Everything it's like, inaccessible. It locks after the buff totem encounter. Son of a! Oh, yeah, shut it's up! Locked. Yeah, you went by it in a breeze oh. because we were going. Yeah, God. Yeah. And then I'm seeing no, it doesn't. Go through the yellow door. <laughs> up the lift. I'm oh, hearing no, I, so I, many I, things. We already did this, lock. guys. It's up a jump pad. That's what. Yeah, that's what I thought oh, wait, initially. No, that is it. So yeah. Give me the thing. Oh, okay. It was up a jump pad. All right. All right, Chat, I love you get? because you confused us. You gave us the answer, and then you gave us three or four more answers for us to consider, but we got there. Appreciate yes. it. Yes. Yeah, Bloodshot. I mean, Frozen Particle. There's so many, like, shout-outs to give, honestly. And that's just in yeah. YouTube. That's just YouTube. That's like, just YouTube. It ain't yeah. even the guys that we talk to. Delta Mitten Squad. Yeah. Like, dude, there's Roanoke Gaming. Like, I never know how to say his name. Zai? X-I-A-E? There's just there's so many. And we love y'all. There was a guy that me and Mark Diaz were playing with, and uh, man, I forget his name. I'll give him a shout out. But okay, we were okay. playing battle with him. Yeah, yeah. And me and Mark, you know, we would hunt down slayers, right? Yeah, we yeah. Would do it. Comp. I like Pain Elemental. He he would do Revenant. Oh, nice. And That's uh, combo. you know, we would do really good, right? You know, holding on to that red border. By the way, competitive mode still in development, and uh, we're we're working on uh, the the borders of of battle mode are going to become a big part of the experience. It's really fun. Love it. So, uh, you know, we. Getting that red border, holding on to it, smashing some slayers, dashing some dreams, and and then uh, <laughs> and then we came across this kid who had a microphone and he wanted to talk and he knew it was me. Okay. You know, uh, he, you know, he, he could tell it was me. So yeah, we started chatting with him and and he's super friendly and they said, "You guys, you guys want to play?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." And and uh, <laughs> this dude wipes the floor with us. Really? I mean, like, 
it was the most vicious beating Damn. like ever. And uh, he he introduced me to a couple of people who I became friends with who are now I believe on the Discord. Yeah. There's a guy. There's a guy Novatech. So there's somebody on 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 uh, PS4, dude. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a marauder. And he's a and, monster. Uh, dude. This guy, like, not to be, I'm, not I'm, to be I, fooled around with. He makes me want to rebalance the game. For him. <laughs> like, seriously, where I'm like, I, listen, you guys better watch out. If you wipe the floor with me in battle mode, just know in the next balance update, I'll be taking away your meta. That's basically Oof. how that. Works. I, no, I'm just kidding. The the uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm proud of myself. I left it in there, even though after I played him, I was like, yeah. So the Marauder, that guy's really hard. <laughs> you know, I think like, he's imbalanced. I think we gotta we gotta nerf yeah, him a yeah, bit. Yeah. No, no, it was it was cool, and it was it was. Uh, I love playing with you. I man, I have That's to awesome. get back to that. Honestly, I haven't done that in a in a little bit because yeah. I've been so focused. All right, how Just do I jam get out of here? Some battle mode, yeah. Yeah, That's I want to get dude. back. I want to get back into the flow. Same. Yeah. Of, just a, what was it like? I don't know. All time is irrelevant now, but uh, Wrench Bomb from chat. Shout out to Wrench Bomb. Him and I, he just hit me up one Saturday, and he's like, "Dude, let's let's get some battle mode in." So we did. We were doing our challenges, getting our points, and yeah, we came up against some sweaty, sweaty slayers. We wiped the floor with a few. Sorry, not sorry, but it, that's what it's about, man. It's up there. And again, like when we would get those really good matches, those slayers would stay in, and we'd play sets. We'd go like through the whole entire yeah. map pool. It's so much fun, dude. Totally. And also, and, of and, course, uh, good. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing when you find. When you when you get into a groove and you think like, all right, you know, the, the demons are unstoppable. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. balanced with the demons, and then you come across that Slayer that changes your entire perspective mm -hmm. on the balance of the game. You know. Yeah. Um, and you're like, everything it, is exactly as it should be. Yes, everything yes. perfectly balanced. Uh, yeah, and shout outs of course that? to Dude yeah, Hell Yeah, Arthur, our, our art. Yeah, Dude X and Zero dude, Rex. Yeah. Spicy Demon Zero Boys. Record. Always. Ex out. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much uh, for all your support, as always. The uh, oh my god, I gotta run out of here. I forgot. Yeah. Um, I gotta ask, were you guys inspired by Super Metroid, like the end of the game, how it like has that sequence where it forces you to bounce? Because it's one of those games that just sticks with you, and I always think about it when I think about this sequence. I mean, again, I love how when when everyone tries to like, I've seen some uh, game critics try to be like, oh, this is derivative of this. I'm like. Welcome to art. You know what I mean? Like, welcome to all art, all the time. If you don't well, think things are derivative, you're nuts. You know what I mean? It, it's uh, it's mostly taken from film, just like the drama of like having to escape. How many times have we seen this? You know, like the oh, yeah. the, uh, the 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 Ripley running through, you know, the 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 spaceship. Yeah, everything uh, falling apart. Oxygen levels lowering. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, totally. You gotta have it. That's why this this level is such a like layer cake and and shout outs to the maniacs that, that also hid literal balloons that you could pop with a birthday cake with a super easter egg of two tyrants yeah, yeah. being fought i mean this this level has it all it does and and um and that was jason by the way put that in there the the um <laughs> i love these these alembic moments you know this is something new for our game the ability to have these kind of like cinematic cg sequences uh, it's just the coolest thing. I forget the name of the artist who, uh, the genius who we hired to help us execute on this stuff. But uh, he works at uh, the Germany office, uh, Frankfurt. Uh, we have a small office out in Frankfurt where we employ a handful of programmers and super talented people. And uh, I believe he works out there. And nice. uh, he made those amazing limbic sequences possible, which are so cool. Very cool. Uh, let's just hold and continue to see if there's one more narrative sequence here. I forget what happens there after. No. We're, go we're going to the Fortress of Doom. And, and we need to, you know, one thing that I, I wish that you could do mm -hmm. and, and uh, is uh, go back to the Fortress of, I don't know. It, I remember it during development, that's a development story, is we wanted to be able to go back and forth to the Fortress of Doom whatever we wanted. But ultimately, uh, we really had to go into the experience because it would break the levels. You would like... You could cheese the levels so bad, you know, by doing that. So by just it, like it, leaping it, back and forth and like oh, yeah. shortcutting it was stuff. That's completely. Fair. It's um, it's such a dialed in experience that uh, well, I shouldn't say that. It, when you the more linear you make it like this, the the more you can control the experience and really really dial in the difficulty and the challenge, uh, which which ultimately was more important to us. I mean, stay in your lane, know your lane, 
and make the best version of that kind of game. You know, don't you don't want to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that just because you're the game that makes everybody happy. I mean, I think ultimately you really just want to know what are the strengths of the kind of game I'm making and how do I make the best version of that game, you know? Um, so ultimately snapping the Fortress of Doom into kind of a linear progression felt better. I got lots of points. I got lots of stuff and lots of ways to spend yeah. things. And there's a I'm lots. Ready. I got lots of questions for you too. If you're ready, are you ready? Let's do it. Let's okay. Do it. I'm not going anywhere. The kids are upstairs. Everybody's hiding. I told them <laughs> to be quiet. So no dogs, no nothing. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Question is from uh, Pizzutz, which I love. Uh, Long time community <laughs> member. Pizzutz asked the following question. Always makes me want to eat pizza. Sorry, it's your fault. I'm not sorry. Neither should you be. Okay. Question for Hugo. I know you are a fan <laughs> of mechs. But are you a fan of BattleTech slash MechWarrior? And also, would an Atlan control more like a Jaeger or more like a BattleTech mech? And then also another question at the end of that is, and what about the Arc mechs? Lots of questions about mechs in there. Answer whichever so one you I, like. I would love to go into uh, more. D Frozen Particle, that's his name. Frozen Particle oh, yeah. is the new, the new guy on the we scene. Big shout, shout out to Frozen yeah. Particle. Big time. Check out his, check out his YouTube page. There is there is good stuff uh, on there. Nice on there for sure. And You're then, distracted. Course, get back to the mix, Hugo. Get back and to the Griffin, mix. Griffin Gaming has some good stuff. So yes, oh, yeah, Griffin uh, Gaming's good. Guy. So, um, uh, the question: The mechs and how would they handle? You know, I well, let's go look at the mech because that thing is awesome. Oh, um, yeah. Good call. I so I don't know. Like obviously, when it comes to uh, uh, ga game gameplay, would dictate. You know how these things would work uh, for sure. So I'm not going to say that they they move like Jaegers, uh, and ultimately that doesn't make for the most engaging experience. But mm -hmm. uh, sure, I think that they would be somewhat athletic. But I also find it really intriguing to be able to have a gameplay sequence where they move more like it's two galleons fighting each other, and and it's kind of like a slowed down, more methodical version, strategic version of what uh, the combat dance in uh, Doom Eternal is. But Sure. Could they be athletic? Could they be, uh, you know, a little bit more slow in potting? Um, I, I wouldn't want it to feel like, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I, I don't know that you want it to just be meaningful, like whatever it is. I think it has to be a spike in the fantasy that the player is, power fantasy that the player is experiencing uh, throughout the base game. You know, you don't, you don't want the experience to be too jarring and too different. So probably they'd be pretty athletic and, and, uh, and move up, up pretty smoothly i mean big shout out to ian uh i forget ian's last name i believe it's ian vasquez um but uh, take a look at this thing i mean this thing looks awesome yeah it really you does. know and it it looks amazing i love how it's just sitting in there you know chilling remnants of uh of battles that you fought in the past you know um it's for sure I would history to, yeah yeah I, I would love to 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 uh learn more about that thing and it's, it is super cool Right. Oh yeah, we haven't gone into our freaking spot. I know, we haven't even looked at the, the real cave it. here. That's crazy. There's Look, so much to get a... into. I love hey, this. Hey, fans, where, where is this chair? Somebody, listen, at the next QuakeCon, I would really love to be able to, listen, as soon as this COVID is over, mm -hmm. we all got to meet up at QuakeCon. I want to see 100%. everybody there. Seriously. Yes. Like, yes. I, it, the next QuakeCon is going to be awesome. If you haven't been to QuakeCon, Josh could tell you all about it. It is the coolest thing ever. Like, it's awesome. It's one giant LAN party, and we all just hang out, and everybody's in their pajamas, and we're gaming. Just just all... It's it's awesome. It's like going and, to church for, like, fans of id games and just fans of games in general. Of all fans of games of stuff. in general. It's yeah, there's tabletop stuff. games. Yeah. We could warhammer it up. We could do all kinds <laughs> of stuff. It's, it's, it's really awesome. So, and when we have... So we're all going to meet there, you know, the whole the whole crew. And uh, and we have to. I gotta see somebody who makes this thing. Yeah. You know. In in uh, when we get there, if I don't see that on somebody's table, I'm gonna be disappointed. You're gonna start and flipping then, uh, tables. Yeah. The chair. Look at the chair. I need this chair. The chair is you know, awesome. Everson Tung designed this chair, and, and he'll tell you we spent a lot of freaking time getting this chair to look cool. Emerson uh, doesn't play around with his designs. Yeah, he does play around. Look at, yeah. look at this guy's stuff. Uh, and, 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 and look at that. What does that mean? Not going to talk about that. That's not what this stream is about. Fans. I was it's wondering not for you about, to zoom into that. There it is. Not about talking about, you know, is that a wife and kid? Who knows? I don't know. Maybe grandparents. Maybe that's grandma. Hmm. Who knows? Who knows? BJ's, 
Jay's wife. Ooh. I don't know. Ooh, okay, okay. Let's just theorize. Let's just make stuff up. Yeah, it's way more uh, fun. It's a rabbit's cage. Hmm. Look at that. Very peculiar. Wonder that, that is who might live there. And then when people ask, like, well, how, how did his armor change? This, this is where he worked on it. We, we answer all the questions if you yep. pay attention. Yep. And uh, that's a that's a, a energy cell. Might take a little argent. 68. Yeah, we'll shout out. And then, so our uh, guns our concept, and also bullets. Go on. Sorry. Yeah, our, our concept team is not. They're not only concept artists and genius concept artists at that. John Lane, and and uh, and and uh, Evan, Ethan Evans, Ethan Evans, and and uh, Emerson, and all those guys. But they are also uh, comedians, because uh, <laughs> look at this. I mean, this stuff is is hilarious. Yeah. You know? Um. Where's my favorite one? This is my favorite one. The <laughs> demonology today and open dialogue for the eternally damned. Living with fear. How the doomslayer is only is only a manifestation of your unresolved inner turmoil. <laughs> Mortally misunderstood. We examine the harmful effects of the demonizing of demonizing the mortally challenged. Slayer outrage. Why the slayer owes the demon community an apology. Pick up Listen. your copy today, folks. Get it. Get it going. Get your Here's my, my my pizza. There it is. That's oh, there he is. I, You're I everywhere. Own I own, uh, so people ask what this is. This mm -hmm. is a trading rock. Our guy is so badass. Those are his fist marks, dude. Damn. He punches rock. Damn. That's it. And he sharpens his blade. The grindstone, for sure. And, uh, dude. What is that I see? Chucks. Okay. Nunchucks. Okay. Why does he have nunchucks? Because they're awesome. And if you were, <laughs> if you are... I don't know what age, and maybe y'all still mess with nunchucks, but I don't believe I hope that so. you do. My God, I hope so. But in the eighties, yeah, like the eighties were all about ninjas, and, and like <laughs> true. When you were a kid, they move American Ninja and Ninja this and Ninja that, and so it was Ninja everything. And yeah. Bruce Lee met with with with, uh, with nunchucks, and and all of them did. So I had nunchucks. We have all have hurt ourselves severely oh, trying yeah. to do nunchuck stuff. And uh, and that's why he has nunchucks. That's it, because all badasses, you know, have nunchucks. There's no foam on those nunchucks. Those things would hurt you if you swing them wrong. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I don't want to say anything, but the new weapon is nunchucks. That's that's what it is. <laughs> He's, I'm joking. That would be amazing. Damn. They should have been. Nunchucks. Damn it. That would that would have been the greatest thing in the world <laughs> if we gave him nunchucks. If I was a better uh, game developer, I would have made them uh, nunchucks. Because uh, uh, that would have been hilarious. This is uh, collector. The collection never ends. So he's a toy collector. He's just mm -hmm. a big. He's just a big nerd. And and uh, so that. I think these comics are amazing. And little little piece of fiction here. Yeah. That character is actually designed. Like like every what? inch of this game is designed. And those are. Uh, what that is is actually some Marauder explorations of, of uh, very, very early, early, early stuff. And then I had I, I asked Emerson to expand on it. I told him, let's make a fictional superhero for the Doom universe that uh, who knows? You know, who knows where this is? So I think this character is badass. You see the sketch. It's really awesome. And I would love to do something with that character in the future. That is actually a concept painting from... Um, the cosmetic stuff so you know that we have podiums and we have skins and very very early on that was an early concept selling what the podiums could be and the, and the new skins which i thought was so cool that's right that everyone knows from concept was the original carcass the original carcass looked Ooh. like something out of me. so uh yeah we were able to you know uh pull pull all these things that was a character uh, from uh, the Doom universe that we were going to use. Uh, as you'll see later, you'll see a version of him. He, he's the uh, Calabos, the sightless judge. And um, of course, and that was what he originally looked like. John Lane's uh, really, really awesome concept. Uh, what other little stuff could I show you? There is uh, Commander Keen's yep. uh, helmet and stuff like that. Uh, uh, we have the whole Hilar box collection there almost. It's a lot. Uh, dude, if you haven't taken the time, fans. To read these titles, they they are hilarious. They, From dope people. fish to dope fish gets me every time. The dope tail, yeah, it, <laughs> every it, time. It, 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 it's so funny. The caco in the rye, 1984 dead demons. To kill a mocking demon, you know the demon farm. Demon these farm. are all oh, obviously favorite. these are classics, is what they are. The the, the, the guts of wrath, <laughs> <laughs> the ripping tree. My best friend Daisy. I I think honestly. Uh. 
uh, what, the, what the point of this and what you could see throughout this whole game, the joy that we had making this thing. I mean, like a good development cycle usually produces a good game, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you could work hard. And, and you could you could hit your deadlines and you could bust your butt and you could still have a good time. You know, um, if we're not laughing while we're making this stuff, you know, we're not doing it right. And if you're not smiling while you're playing our games, we're doing something wrong. You know, and, and that's when you ask, like, why we do this stuff is because yeah. we just don't have fun. Yeah. You know, like I, I seriously, how much serious shit is going on in the world all the time? I would just much. so much rather be seeing Cattinger cooking. <laughs> like, I, I think that's hilarious. Um, uh, that was a uh, so the cultist base mm -hmm. uh, that we played the second level that was one of John Lane's original concepts for what the cultist base could look like. So at some point we were gonna act, when I said we would go up to a spaceship, that's what the spaceship was gonna look like. And we actually had a spaceship so level. Uh, well, that was one of the concepts for the spaceship, and and John had this really fantastic concept for like spacefaring, you know, demonic vessels that were just these giant monoliths floating in space and. Uh, so yeah, we, we had it lying around. We used it for the for the comic book cover. Uh, I've never actually played the Doom game, but I just thought this was awesome. Yeah. We also we of course had to get this to be authentic and and correct, uh, otherwise people would would freak out. And didn't belong seen... specifically to like Packard Bell or Hewlett Packard or yeah. like Gateway I, or I, one of the older ones. Yeah, I've seen people make these guitars, and yeah. I need to see more of them, fans. I, I need these. My brother is a is a big guitarist. Uh, you know, is in a hair metal band, and oh, he nice. honestly, Doom. You know, I'm I'm not a metal aficionado, so yeah. I don't want to be a poet here. But like, you know, growing up, my brother was totally a, a, a big metalhead, and uh, and and of course, man, we got to have these uh, these these heavy metal is just a part of Doom. Yeah. So of course, the Doom Slayer would have just like a bitching collection of, uh, of guitars, and uh, and then your toys. Uh, I think that when you talk about engagement. You know the satisfaction that player has. I love seeing on Reddit when people take pictures of their completed collection. And we promised you that we would be getting these things out to you, and I we mean, are. Like, go back to the caco real quick. Obviously, his eye is not green screened as it is here, but like, it's one to one. It's using the model and it's making it in real life. And this thing is heavy. This is significant. This could be a real it weapon. Is. Of course, it wouldn't be because it's too adorable. But it could be. That's how it is. It is. It is. Uh, yeah, and, and you know all the ancient weapons from Sentinel times. I mean, just that, lying that's around. Stuff. Just put them in just the. Put them in Man, the there's a whole other story to tell from that period of the Slayer's world, but you know, I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah. The uh, we've got grenades. We've got a helmet. Sure. We've got we've got uh, tools. We've got a glove. I mean, there's there's just so much cool stuff here. Uh, Did yeah. we already see the weights? Isn't there weights? Lying around somewhere too. Where is that? There, like some dumbbells or something. I can't remember. He's got dumbbells. Yeah. Um, he's got smart bells. He's got dumbbells. He's got it all. He does. He does. There's a, the, there's the a bot, the cleaner. Oh, respect. He's got, he's got the skateboard. I think Commander Keen had a skateboard, so yeah. I, I believe. So, didn't yeah. he? so so. Uh, and the rabbit food. And, uh, I love that the skateboard's it, in here because it makes you think that like. That, Josh? What, how did that get there? I, that shouldn't what have been. That? that shouldn't have made it. I thought we discussed this, but there it is. Aren't there? Are there some snacks that you missed too? Go back to your computer desk real quick. Was there a snack that we just uh, greased over, like next to the pizza box? What, what was that flavor right there? What kind of flavor we got? What kind of flavor town are we going to? Oh, takoyaki. Okay. Taki. So Lane's Lane's is John Lane. So so uh, so everything in here. We all just make fun of each other. Actually, that's not the case. The the artists make fun of everyone, and they don't really put themselves in a lot of this stuff. But if you're a 3D modeler, mm -hmm. it's a free for all. Uh, Marty has <laughs> stores. We we do. We don't take enough shots at Marty. That's what I think. I think we got to take a few more. There's a there's at least one I know that's coming in uh, DLC two that I noticed. So so yes. there. It's not like it's over. There's there's more shots to be taken, and they will be taken. He's got Daisy picks. Okay. He's got a. He's got a. Sounds a, wrong. You know, kill, keep kill list. Oh, the kill list. Love it. He's got a. He somehow got multiple CDs in there. I don't know if they're disc images. Obviously, he's got them yeah. legally because the Doom Slayer is above yep. level, above board. Go on. Yeah. Or originally, he had a he had a background mm -hmm. image of a location on Earth. That's so right. Right up the little ship. Uh, I had an image made that was going to be a location. Yep. And. Uh, you know, to kind of like say a little something uh, about his past. I I ultimately didn't didn't want it in there. Take a take a little softer touch. Be a little too 
that's for another Too time. So I, okay. I, I, yeah, a little bit, you know, but but a uh, little bit too much info, so we scaled back on that stuff. Did we ever give you... a shout out to that oil painting that Zeus fifty four yeah. on Twitter? If you haven't followed him, what is wrong with you? Because he is always our favorite source for fan art. He is just a darling person, and look at this amazing art. And that that real life canvas was sent from him to you guys. It's hanging in the it office right now. It's an unbelievable painting, yeah. you know, and, and I tell Zeus all the time, every time I see him, he needs to keep painting from one artist to the other. Don't stop painting, Zeus. You know, you, you got a great career ahead of you. And uh, yeah, and then my guns uh, the uh, guns. set up here and, and we also we have the model viewer in there. And this is a model viewer as mm -hmm. well, obviously, uh, as you guys all know. And uh, yeah, and, a, and a hopefully a, a setup that you guys are jealous of. <laughs> but uh because that that desk is awesome the desk is awesome uh, the funny cool. thing is too is you were referencing that that background that uh that location that may or may not be on earth the funny thing is i remember playing the early versions of it too and it like it's still they did such a good job because it convincingly just also kind of looked like a generic you know windows yeah. 90 whatever background so it was like it was like that subtle. was not easy yeah <laughs> no i could imagine I could yeah imagine. it's not that i i just want to Got to hold a little back. Yeah. That's it. You know, that, that was really all. And, and, um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's cool. We love that room. All right. This is the last and question. Last question of the night. Are you ready for it? This is coming from none other than the username is dude, which I had to get double specified because I was like, wait, is dude just the sound? And then I'm supposed to ask the question. But no, dude is the user. Here's the question What is Hugo Martin's favorite game trilogy? Uh, that's really hard. It's tough. Um, trilogies are a totally different category. Yeah, game trilogy. I can't. I can't really say. I mean, I love God of War. I love the. You know, I love all those games. Mm -hmm. Uh, the trilogy that that's kept me engaged throughout, where one, two, and three. I, look, here's the thing about games. They, they, they're in their infancy. That's yeah. what's so exciting about the medium. I mean, how long have, has modern gaming, uh, you know, as we know it today, with the kind of narrative that we have, the stories, type of stories we're telling, the mechanics, you know, just the graphics, everything. Yeah. I mean, it, it hasn't been around for very long. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and so, uh, so uh, that's why I hate picking something that's modern. But I think I'd have to say Dark Souls because I think that... Uh, Every Dark Souls has something to offer that I keeps me engaged, and, and it, it definitely is. But Resident Evil uh, yeah. certainly has, you know, so, so many fantastic entries. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a lame answer. I feel like that's I a more obvious answer. Lame. No, I mean honestly, like in chat, people are popping off Mass Effect, Halo, God of War, uh, Stalker, okay, there you go. of it, course, uh, Quake. Halo, I, I, Halo. Yeah, that 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 definitely the is first up three. There. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, ODST. I've played them all. I mean, I've played every Halo that's mm -hmm. ever come out. The, the uh, yeah. So I that that was that was another one. Um, yeah, they're all they're all really good. Yeah. I and by the way, I, Dark Souls oh, one, two, and three. That is not a bad answer. Honestly, if I had a gun to my head, that two would be my answer. But go on, what were you going to yeah, say? Yeah, probably right. Because yeah. uh, but, but the, uh, the thing that I'd like to do differently, you know, that we're trying to do with from 2016 to eternal is just do something different. I mean, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think that what you guys want us to do is just make a better version of the last game. I mean, with just minor tweaks. I mean, I, I think we really do have to present you some, with something different. So like, I like that 2016 is different than eternal. I mean, that's the point, you know, 100%. we're never going to beat ourselves and, and we, we just want to innovate. We just have to keep innovating. And if we lay back and say, Oh, let's just make another 2016, you know, a couple more levels, few right. wrinkles, like, you know, I, that's just not going to cut it. So hopefully, uh, what we're trying to do with with our with this trilogy, with this with this series of games, the, the DLC, obviously the story is gonna gonna wrap up in the DLC, is is um, is be able to provide you with the, with unique experiences uh, every every time you buy buy a Doom game. So uh, yeah, but that would be my answer. Uh, may, maybe not the the best answer, but but uh, I mean I don't know There's why no that's not a answer. good answer. I was gonna say I was like it's also my best answer, so please don't attack it. No. Yeah, well, I mean, and I feel bad because Resident Evil is that's pretty incredible. amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but again, uh, that, that's Halo, another. Yeah. Oh, and Halo I, 1, 2, and 3. And, 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 you know, some people, honestly, I'm a, I'm a Reach stand. Reach is actually my favorite. That's a hot take. But anyway, no, there's no wrong answer with that. And, you know, again, we're all here. We all love games. I'm seeing a million people also popping off about Metroid. Of course. Like, again, 
there is no wrong answer to this. Doom 1, 2, yeah. and 3, the 64 count as a trilogy. If you think it does, it does. Again. Yeah, how can they not say Doom? I, yeah. I'm going to say Doom. <laughs> no, I, I mean... Uh, the, that's, that's a yeah. based answer, but yeah. I mean, obviously, <laughs> we, we can't just say, you know, us. Us is... That's it. Final answer. We're trying to yeah, step no. out there, but yeah. No, okay. I think it is that precious time where you unleash yeah. the children from uh, their hiding... <laughs> up in the, the, the attic right now because we know they're playing Doom 1, 2, and 3 and, and there's only so much time in the day and we got to get back to you guys building Warhammer 40K models together and, and going off into the sunset. So everybody that has been here, thank you guys. We love you guys. We will be right back here, same place, same time next yeah. week. Uh, and again, Hugo Martin, thank you again for hanging out, being here you with us. And just, go ahead. What do you got? One thing. Uh, hmm. We won't talk about it this week because okay. Josh and I talked about, you know, giving you guys a little bit of a reveal every week. We wanted to talk about meat hook traversals. Those are in DLC too. We we'll talk about that next week. We will. But uh, and every and every week, guys, tune in because uh, we're going to work it out with marketing and make sure that we're we're staying on track here with the messaging. We don't want to give away too much. We're going to create synergy. We, create synergy and, we'll and see what they what they feel comfortable with us talking about. What I'd like to make every one of these episodes, me and Josh want to make sure that we're giving you guys a little bit more information about the upcoming game uh, every week. So next week we'll talk about meat hook traversals and maybe right. some other stuff. So, so definitely tune in. That's right. Until then, love you guys. We'll see you next week. Stay safe. Laters. See you later. <laughs>